Buenos días, ahora mejor. ¿no? Morning, now it's better. Welcome to this day about the project, a Prima project that is vegan, that is about valorizing the diversity of fig tree and ancient fruit crop for a sustainable Mediterranean agriculture. Tunisia, Turkey, and other parts of Spain. It's a pleasure for us to receive you in our center and to have you here for this event. In Spanish. Uh, the fig tree has always been a great, very important in the Mediterranean and for a long time it has had a, f a favorable uh, presentation because of its uh, uh, technical area. Although it is a very uh, a, f a tree that adapts to different uh, weather conditions in the context of climate change, the, the, uh, the farming of this um, tree has to cope with different challenges. In general, the climate change is affecting drastically Mediterranean air, and it is essential to find solution to adapt the agricultural system to the increase of temperature, drought, and the different uh, situation of the soil. We must tackle different uh, working lives, such as diversity of uh, different cultivars, as well as tolerance of those uh, agricultural techniques, uh, improving the production, efficiency, and the sustainability of the agricultural system. We also must improve modern techniques in order to combine the selection, the traditional selection, and the molecular that would be helped with markers to improve the different uh, agriculture, different crops, uh, in order to adapt them to the climate change. That's why the fig tree, and that is the objective of this project, shows all all these characteristics and all these conditions to adapt to each dry uh, atmosphere that are uh, the different soils of the Mediterranean area. We know all the potential of this uh, uh, tree or this fruit and also because there is a great demand from the consumers and also due to its uh, great uh, uh, qualities. And so this is all the context of uh, Figan project. It's a reopen project financed by the Prima uh, funds, and it uh, will last three years. It is coordinated by the University of Pizza in Italy. We have here the uh, Professor Giordani. And also, uh, we have the participations of Extremadura and also the participation of uh, uh, the different uh, organizations, such as CESIC in Malaga, the one, the University of Tunis, and also the Department of the University of Kokoraba in Turkey. The objective of this project is to uh, get uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, col this crop better adapted to the Mediterranean area in the context of the climate change. Throughout the day, you will see different uh, speech that will deal with different aspects of the project, different tags, but also we'd like to um, to give some uh, guidelines. It's a project that has been well elaborated and it is very important for our country because it tries to find a selection among different varieties of fig trees, assessing the different varieties and see the genetic uh, and of these uh, trees and uh, seeing it in Tunis, in Italy, in Spain, and see what are the best uh, variety that will adapt to the cha climate change. In the other part, we have to identify the genes that are the ones that can resist to uh, saltiness and drought, but there is also another part that is really interesting for me that uh, that is very interesting, that is a methodology, a participative, participating methodology, and it had produced producer, breeders, political, uh, political politicians, and different consumers through different workshops 
online, on living labs, and this enables to establish a dialogue among all the parts, among all the stakeholders, and we can go on, investigate, and center all, focus all the efforts on the, the most interesting points for all the stakeholders. Today, we're going to see a lot of things, but I would like to take the advantage in this moment and today uh, to underline the great work that has been done in CITESX over the years on the uh, fig tree production, studying the different uh, evolution of the uh, life cycle of the trees until it reach the, until the fruit reach the consumer, seeing all the uh, the different part, the different phases, uh, and of the production of these um, tr of these figs. Uh, I want to see uh, all the work that has been with Margarita Telop as the main uh, researcher, but also Mr. Manuel Serradillo, who is here as well, who coordinate another department. But I would like to uh, just show my uh, acknowledgement for all the people that has been there, for all those working teams, for their contribution to the world of in of research. Thank you. Thanks to the thanks to them. Here in Extremadura, the fig tree has become an alternative in crop, either in uh, rain rain-fed uh, areas, but also in the other. Uh, Marga, you're going to mention a lot of things. So they are working, uh, trying all the different variety in the uh, in the fig tree crops, and so that we can have uh, varieties that can be adapted to every kind of situation, working a different system of uh, farming, to implementing strategies of nutrition, but also a watering system, including all the different systems of the varieties that are more interested at a commercial level. We are working with new system of productions in the different uh, uh, systems. There are a great, of, uh, a great number of uh, working lines that will be very important in all the sector of fruit, uh, either in Extremadura but also in the Mediterranean area. That's all for me. Thank you for being here, and I will uh, uh, give the floor to Mr. Jok. Thank you, Carmen. Welcome to everybody. I'm Professor uh, Giordani from the Department of Agriculture, Food and Environment uh, of the University of Pisa. First of all, let me spend some words. Uh, I want to thank uh, Carmen Con Gonzalez Ramos, uh, Director of CCTEX, uh, Professor Margarita Lopez Corrales, uh, her uh, collaborators, uh, Guadalupe Dominguez, Agustin uh, Jaramino, I, 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 I hope the pronunciation is correct, <laughs> and um, for, for um, their sweet welcome, for their availability, and for the great organization and promotion of this important, uh, of this important workshop. This gives us the opportunity to talk about um, the, this uh, uh, project that I uh, direct, <coughs> and give also the opportunity to other host speakers that can uh, describe you their activities uh, related to the fig tree. So I want also to, uh, to say thank to all the speakers in advance, and I want to thank uh, all of you for your participation, for, for being here. You in presence, uh, also many people that uh, is in a video conference. So, <coughs> we can start. So, uh, the project FIG and valorizing the diversity of the fig tree and ancient fruit crop for sustainable Mediterranean agriculture. The project started in, uh, tw in 2020 and will end in uh, 2024. It is uh, a, a project of Prima. Prima is uh, the partnership for uh, re research and innovation in the Mediterranean uh, area. And the project is supported by European Union. It doesn't work? Okay. 
the project is structured in five uh, work package. The first one is project coordination and management. The second, WP1, is uh, the participatory assessment of the potential of, uh, of genotypes in which living labs, I mean uh, meeting with the stakeholder, will be organized where uh, <coughs> the, the, the exchange of materials uh, and knowledge can take place uh, in a participatory uh, in, my, in a participatory uh, contest. The second uh, WP is the fig tree, valorization, characterization, and selection. Here we uh, carry out um, uh, both genotyping and phenotyping analysis on about 200, 300 fig genotypes uh, that are conserved in uh, uh, germoplast banks in Spain, in Spain, in uh, Turkey, and in uh, Tunisia. The first product, product of this work pack is the selection of about uh, 20 uh, drought and salt condition tolerant uh, uh, genotypes. And these genotypes will have uh, also uh, the tra traits that are expected by stakeholders. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the data coming from uh, the work pack 2 wi will be um, used in uh, work pack 3 concerning in genome wide association studies. Here, uh, uh, genetic traits related to fig production and fig quality, and also related to the mm, resistance to drought and salinity. Uh, will be uh, identified, and these uh, uh, particular molecular markers uh, can be useful and can be exploited at the end of the project uh, with um, uh, 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 on uh, <coughs> on uh, project uh, on on uh, breeding project uh, in the in the future. The last work package is the dissemination, the exploitation, and communication activity, where uh, with the, with the objective. To, um, to, dis to um, uh, extend the, the, the impacts of the project, to maximize the impact of the project. Next one, please. This is not, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is not my, ah, sorry. Another, another presentation, I suppose. <laughs> so, uh, forward, but here? Yes. But this is not the, the, the correct slide. I don't know why. This, this is not my presentation. No. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> So we have a, a, techni a technical problem. <laughs> this is the correct presentation. The first, but, uh, but the third slide, uh, okay, no problem. Okay, okay. So I can I can move, okay. So uh, the first objective of uh, our project is exploring, valorizing, and evaluating fig cultivar from available Spanish, Tunisian, and Turkish fig collection. This uh, will be carried out analyzing genetic characteristics using a genotyping by sequencing approach, and also analyzing morphological and physiological traits of fig cultivar to select plants with characteristics wanted by stakeholders and most suitable to be cultivated in drought and salinity condition. I mean, more adapted to climate change. Other objectives are the uh, identification of genetic traits linked to yield, fruit quality, and drought and salinity adaptation, 
that can be exploited in the in future breeding programs and finally the dissemination of project products uh, and results uh, to stakeholders <coughs> to achieve this uh, The order is different. But anyway, um, so um, concerning the work package one, the, the team of agriculture and food economics of our department at the beginning of the project performed a market, a, a market analysis uh, of the FIG, uh, focusing in particular in the Mediterranean uh, region. This with the objective to understand the importance uh, of, the fig, the, of the fig tree uh, production uh, in this uh, area. Um, um, we wanted also to, to understand uh, possible issues and also developmental opportunities. Um, I give you just uh, some data because uh, I, we have not so much time. As you know, Turkey is the, f is the leader world pro uh, producer uh, of figs with about 300,000 uh, tons produced uh, per year. It is followed by Egypt and Morocco that it is uh, the first per capita uh, consumer with about four kilograms per person per year. Spain is uh, the first producer in, uh, in Europe with about uh, 36,000 uh, uh, tons. Uh, concerning harvesting area by country, in the last uh, 20 uh, years, as you can see uh, on, the, on the left in, the, in this picture, we observed uh, a, an increment for, uh, for Spain and uh, for uh, Turkey. The blue uh, and for and also for uh, for Morocco, but we observe also a decrease for Algeria and in uh, Tunisia. As we believe that the selection and the evaluation of fig cultivar should be a shared and participatory. Um, event. I, I, during the, our project, we are going to organize a periodic living lab. I mean, meeting with the stakeholder, where stakeholders, I mean, participants and the researcher can, can collaborate in a transdisciplinary, uh, following a transdisciplinary uh, approach. For this, the, the team of agriculture and food economics uh, prepare the, the, the guidelines uh, with the indication on living lab procedure organization and reporting. And the first two living labs uh, were held in Spain, in Tunisia, and in Turkey in spring of uh, 2021 and 2023. Among the participants, there were <coughs> representatives of uh, companies, farmers, plant growers, but also policy administration, social association, university research center, and also consumer association. Details uh, on uh, Living Lab's uh, objective and, uh, and results will, 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 will be uh, provided by Professor Gada Baraket in next uh, speakers. Following the selection of drought and salinity tolerant cultivar, a catalog with a description of 20 selected cultivar be, be, will be shown to the public during the third Living Lab that uh, is scheduled for next autumn. Through a questionnaire, each participant will be asked to evaluate each cultivar. This is an, an important uh, point of our project because the plants that best satisfy the expectation of participants will be made accessible, made available for validation in field trials, I mean real production facility and context. Concerning work package two, these include uh, both genotyping and phenotyping analysis. For genotyping, the, the team of agriculture genetics produce an high quality reference uh, uh, gene se uh, genome sequence, combining the first version of the, of the genome sequence uh, of the fig tree 
cultivar dotato with the latest uh, methodologies uh, of uh, co uh, chromosome conformation capture. This allows us a deep uh, characterization of the fig tree genome with the identification of about 34,000 protein coding genes. Details uh, on uh, the uh, fig genome, charact uh, genome characterization will be provided by Dr. Gabriele Usai in next presentation. Anyway, this reference sequence, sequence is a prerequisite for genotyping analysis plain in autumn uh, 23, and for genome-wide association studies that, that will be carried out in the last part of the project. So, for genotyping uh, genomic DNA from all 260 uh, fig cultivar um, collected from uh, Tunisian, uh, Spanish, uh, and Turkish germoplasm banks uh, has been isolated, and uh, uh, soon, a genotyping by sequence approach will be followed. Briefly, uh, <coughs> DNA extracted will be fragmented using uh, restriction enzymes, and uh, fragments will be, um, will be linked to adapters and amplified through PCR. Uh, then, the product of amplifications will be sequenced using uh, an Illumina platform. And finally, the sequences uh, of, uh, obtained uh, will be aligned to our reference genome in order to identify single nucleotide uh, variants among our genotypes. Concerning phenotyping analysis, these um, have, been, uh, have been performed both on adult plants in field conditions, but also uh, on propagated plants in pots subjected to drought and salt treatment with the aim to identify, to identify um, uh, drought and salt tolerant genotypes. Details uh, on uh, phenotypic analysis will be provided by Professor Isaac Kuden later. So moving to the third, uh, to, to work pack at uh, three genome-wide association studies, this is uh, a complex uh, a pro a bioinformatic pr procedures that, uh, <coughs> in that use genetic variability data and phenotypic data. It combines this kind of data with the aim uh, um, uh, uh, of uh, identifying genetic characteristics associated to plant and fruit traits, such as growth habit, yield, fruit quality, but also drought and salinity adaptation. An important, uh, an important, uh, this is an important result for our, for our project because this kind of uh, genetic uh, uh, traits can be exploited for, uh, for uh, um, market-assisted selection and for uh, um, breeding programs of the future. This uh, with the aim to develop new cultivar uh, more adapted to climate change. Windows is stopped. Why? Okay. So uh, moving into the last work package, dissemination activities and communication activities. All the partners participated in, uh, in the publication of press releases and uh, all the partners uh, contributed to the constitution of a project logo. You can observe <laughs> in, our, in our banner and so on, and social media accounts, and also to the proje our project uh, website. We participated to a number of uh, international and national conferences where the project uh, has been presented, and uh, first results have been reported. Finally, we published eight scientific publications in Open Assets Peer Review Journal. The, la the last three are in collaboration with uh, the partner of uh, our project. Finally, I would like to thank all the uh, collaborators from uh, the, pa the Department of Agriculture and Food and Environment uh, uh, of uh, my university. I want also to uh, thank uh, all the partners for they contribute, and obviously, all of you for your kind attention. Thank you.
So we can uh, move for with the next uh, with the next uh, uh, communication from Gabriele Usai from University of Pisa. <coughs> Stay here. Thank you. So, uh, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for being here to listen to my presentation. Uh, today I will show you some of the uh, bioinformatics results uh, of the FIGEM project that we are currently conducting at the University of Pisa. So in particular, uh, we are working to generate uh, a new reference genome uh, for the fig tree, which will be useful for the uh, genetic improvement uh, of this uh, species. Next okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, starting from the basics, why is uh, uh, genome sequencing important? So, genome sequencing is uh, a key methodology to obtain uh, a comprehensive uh, understanding uh, of the biology of an organism. In particular, uh, this methodology allows the determination of the order of nucleotides in a DNA molecule, so enabling the identification of genes and the regulatory regions associated with agronomic traits. So genome sequencing can truly help us um, to uh, obtain the information needed to act on a lot of uh, characteristics, such as the enhancement of uh, product quality, uh, the development of disease-resistant plants, uh, enhancing stress tolerance, especially in the context of the climate change, and much more. So um, the genome sequencing is a multi-step uh, procedure. First of all, the, uh, the genome is fragmented into smaller pieces. After that, uh, these pieces are in fact uh, sequenced, meaning uh, that the nucleotides of the DNA are converted uh, into digital data. Finally, uh, through the assembly process, all these data are uh, put together using bioinformatics approaches in order to reconstruct the final digital version uh, of the original DNA sequence. So this process can be represented uh, as the resolution of a very complex puzzle in which every piece of DNA corresponds to a piece of the puzzle. So the final goal is to obtain uh, a single sequence uh, for each chromosome of the analyzed species. That will be the best. However, <coughs> canonical assembly methods uh, generate uh, an haploid representation of the genome. In fact, uh, uh, the chromosome pairs of the two parentals are collapsed into a single sequence, thus losing the parental specific information and also risking uh, significant assembly errors. Today it's possible to partially fix this problem using uh, the so-called chromosome conformation capture methods, which can generate assemblies with uh, separated uh, pairs of chromosomes. This uh, uh, high level of accuracy opens up new opportunities. In fact, uh, the separated chromosomes can provide valuable insights into the genetic difference that contribute to specific traits. And uh, in addiction, it enhances our ability in uh, gene prediction, which is very, very important. So having uh, a top-notch genome, a deep understanding uh, of uh, genetic resources, uh, resources and uh, precise gene predictions, it's like having uh, an encyclopedia at our disposal to unlock the full potential of uh, enhancing and innovating plants. Okay, let's talk just a little bit about uh, the subject of the project. So as you perfectly know, uh, Ficus carica is the most important uh, edible species belonging uh, to the Moraceae family. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. So uh, the fig is notable for uh, its properties, uh, the good market perspectives, the low environmental impact, uh, and uh, many other aspects uh, uh, that will be uh, deepened later, later on. 
However, uh, the genetic improvement uh, level of FIG is uh, low, making this uh, a very stimulating uh, field to work in once obtained uh, uh, sorry, accurate uh, genomic uh, resources. Also, we need to, to speak about a new important uh, threat of the fig tree, the insect uh, Achilles uh, taiwanensis, which is already damaging some of the fig production. In particular, for our sequencing project, uh, we focused uh, on the Italian cultivar uh, dotato. So in this presentation, I will show you some of the, of the results of our ongoing uh, sequencing project with the final aim to obtain uh, a new and accurate reference genome uh, of FIG with separated uh, chromosomes. Okay, let's start with the methods. Uh, I will not go into the details of the methodological part, uh, which is not funny at all. So uh, I just want to uh, highlight uh, uh, the key concept to focus on. So as uh, spoiled by my introduction, uh, we generated the chromosome conformation capture data, in particular using a methodology called IC. The most important feature to keep in mind about this methodology is the uh, ability to generate uh, chromosome specific sequences. So these sequences can be used as key points to uh, identify and distinguish the chromosome pairs during the assembly process, thus uh, splitting the collapsed sequences back to the original ones. In particular, to generate the new pig genome assembly, we implemented the produced IC data into the already available pig genome assembly, the, the version 1.0, which was already produced by our lab using uh, canonical methods. The final result, and this is the important part, um, we generated, we were able to generate a, a new version of the assembly, so the version 2.0, consisting of the two sets of separated chromosomes of FIG. Uh, these chromosomes were further uh, separated into two distinct assemblies called pseudo haplotypes, which were named 0 and 1. So uh, the new version of the assembly was uh, subjected to uh, a complete annotation pipeline in order to uh, characterize every gene of the assembly as far as possible. After the annotation, uh, genes were used for the construction of the allelic gene map of the fig tree. So an allelic gene map refers to the specific locations of uh, different versions of a genes, so the alleles, between the chromosomes of a species. So you can have an idea of uh, this concept by looking at the picture. This helps uh, understand how genes vary among individuals and how these variations may be related to specific traits. After that, uh, the chromosomes were scanned to identify every type of uh, structural variation, which included deletions, uh, insertions, duplication, and so on, obviously including uh, the SNPs. And finally, the genetic variation data were integrated with the allelic gene map to investigate uh, their distribution and their potential effects uh, on these allelic genes. Okay, let's see some uh, of the results. So uh, the sequencing process produced about 130 million of uh, IC sequencing, uh, sequences, sorry, uh, corresponding to a coverage of about 55X. So this data successfully allowed us to generate uh, the two separated uh, sets of sequences of FIG. In particular, these uh, sequences represented about 99 and 97% of the estimated uh, FIG genome, and about 96% of the sequences were associated uh, to the corresponding uh, chromosomes. By performing uh, a comparison, we can observe an, uh, an overall increased contiguity of the new version of the assembly, this is highlighted, for example, by the reduced number of sequences or by the mean and uh, N50 values, which are almost doubled in the new version of the assembly compared uh, to the old one. I know these only look like numbers, but uh, trust me, this is an improvement. 
uh, please do not read uh, all this table. Uh, this is uh, an overview of the genomic variations identified by comparing each chromosomal pair. So uh, this to um, giving us an idea of the intragenomic diversity of uh, these uh, species. So in total, we identified about 1.8 million uh, variations so far, uh, making fig a mildly heterozygous uh, uh, species with about uh, five variations per kilobase. And this is the, um, an overview of the annotation process performed on the two sets of chromosomes. Overall, uh, we were able to predict about uh, 34,000 genes per set. And uh, we were also able to annotate more than the 80% of them. Furthermore, we were able to associate about uh, 20,000 allelic gene pairs, so representing uh, the previously mentioned uh, allelic gene map of FIG. So it's always important to remember that uh, genes are crucial in every sequencing project, since uh, they carry the information needed to act uh, on, the on the quality of the final product. Uh, as you may have uh, guessed, uh, this is not FIG, but it was the only image I could find. <laughs> as for the last slide uh, of the results, I decided uh, to put the most complicated of all. So uh, this is a preview of the intragenomic uh, variability data obtained by comparing uh, the integrating, sorry, in the structural variations and the allelic gene map. So uh, you can see that uh, for every compared region of the allelic genes, we uh, indicated the epidistance value, which is commonly used to describe uh, the sequence variability. So the greater the value, the greater the variability. Once all this data will be collected, it will be possible to perform different uh, kinds of correlations among the structural variations and uh, other observations, such as uh, quality traits, uh, stress response, uh, and uh, many others. So, in conclusion, we improved uh, the quality of the first version uh, of the FIG genome assembly and its annotation, including uh, the generation of separated chromosomes. We identified uh, the gene genomic variations in each pair of chromosomes, so focusing on uh, genes and uh, regulatory regions, and providing uh, a preliminary analysis of the intragenomic uh, variability. The finalization of this data will unlock the full potential of uh, this new reference genome, so enabling uh, advanced genetic improvement technologies to enhance product quality, uh, develop disease-resistant plants, increase stress tolerance, uh, and uh, explore other possibilities, including, of course, the genotyping and the GWAS analysis. So my presentation has come to an end. Uh, thank you for listening, and thanks to all the participants of this project. Thank you, Gabriele. Yes, yes. Next presentation comes from Margarita Lopez Corrales from CCTEX. The floor is yours. Good morning. Thank you for being here in the room and also for the people who are online. And my presentation is about the Spanish Germ Plant Bank and the different production systems that we have implemented in our research center. In 1989, we, in the different autonomous region, we thought about enhancing the different fig trees that we have in Spain. And 209 genotypes were identified, and what we tried at that moment was to establish in Extremadura as the main region uh, that could produce either at the national but also at the community level. And initially, 
we character try to uh, make a morphological characterization by the script that has been done with uh, different researchers of the Mediterranean area. And what we uh, found out was there were a large number of homonymies and synonymies. That means there is a great confusion in the variety, in the cultivars of fig trees. As a consequence of this study, in 2001, we thought about uh, uh, creating a new methodology to characterize, but also also with molecular markers in collaboration with a partner of this project with Dr. Inarchidovsesic. In uh, we uh, made a bookshop with uh, molecular markers and we selected nine molecular markers and we identified, we established, sorry, a new bank, a germplasm bank in Cis of CCTEX with uh, 130, 140 new varieties that throughout all these years we have uh, widened up. And nowadays we, they are in um, uh, rain-fed condition, no, sorry, in dripped uh, uh, conditions, irrigation conditions. And we have a, a collaboration with the different uh, ministries of agriculture and other center, and we uh, create the uh, UPOP, and we published a book of the varieties of fig trees, and this uh, led to the register of commercial variety of fig trees in Spain, and some are with royalties, and one that has a royalty system. Another study that we have done in CCT, and once we had established what was the German Plus Bank, it was to study what, uh, what were the varieties that had the most uh, genetic diversity that could uh, be uh, present. And we uh, press select, uh, we identify 30 varieties that are the minimum of uh, varieties of uh, cultivars that can correspond to this maximum genetic uh, diversity. Here in the chart, you can see that many are from the uh, Mayo Balearic Island. Motseran Pont will explain her, th their collections because Balearic Islands have a great variety, uh, genetic varieties. Uh, all what we know is from previous studies, and we know that there are different systems of domestication. One of them is the one that is located in uh, Balearic Islands, and that's why there are a great variety with other countries, Arabic countries, that, and they are different from the ones that we uh, uh, grow in Spain. Our, our germo plants blank, we can see that there is a high varietal diversity, uh, color, uh, color of the pulp, pulp color. We have different varieties, and all of their more than 90 person are uh, matched to the uh, Spanish germo plasm and others to the different parts of the world. And now, uh, as we don't have a lot of time, uh, I, will, uh, I wanted to talk about the different uh, things. Once we have done all this variety, we wanted to see how uh, we cultivate it, and we uh, try to study the different uh, uh, c uh, fig tree cultivation, either the rain in rain-fed condition, but also with drip irrigated system. So normally it's in rain-fed conditions with the production uh, that it depending on the soil, well, it had one, 1,500 to 3,000 kilos per hectare, and we picked up from the soil 
uh, we pick, we harvest it from the soil, and that was the si traditional system. Nowadays, we have seen the intensive system, and it, we needed uh, some irrigated plantation, or uh, the the, syst the planting from was six by six or five by front, and the average fields were six by from six to seven tons per hectare of dry, dry figs. In the uh, we have. Uh, to 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 make a dif uh, difference between the dry consumption system or the fresh consumption because the trunk uh, uh, normally we have one meter from the soil from the this is the trunk and the here we have we do light pruning and it is very important to avoid the contact of the water with the dry fig because this can have a, a consequence of different uh, uh, disease. And uh, then following with other uh, super intensive orchards, this happened to olive trees and also almond trees because we have super intensive orchards. We have studied uh, a system of uh, new uh, planting in uh, uh, with irrigated system with super intensive orchard with 1,000 plant per hectare with a, a frame of five by, by two, and we developed a system of nets that would be uh, suspended 50 centimeters above the ground with the objective that uh, on the one hand we could harvest it but uh, uh, easily and uh, improve the quality of the product. With this system, we, on the 9th, of, uh, uh, we could obtain 10 tones per per hectare for dry fig. And this uh, was under a project uh, that we have, uh, that has led to, um, to different papers. Considering that this system of production is uh, a cost of installation because of the presence of the system of net. Uh, we thought about implementing another system that is the, this system that we have now in which we are going to study the system to uh, for uh, dry consumption again in a planting frame of 3 by 2.5 meters we want to uh, uh, have a maximum height of four meters and with localized irrigation. And what we want is through along the rows, we want uh, to have an anti weed netting so that the figs fall on the ground and with a fruit aspirator, we harvest the fruit. So we are trying to improve the system of harvesting, but also at the same time improve the, the quality uh, of the fruit. This uh, uh, the same as the superintivity is important that the localized irrigation is in the center of the of the row to avoid the contact, direct contact of the fig, who which is in a procedure of uh, drying to avoid the contact of this wet uh, that could be produced by the uh, irrigation. This is with the dry uh, consumption. Now for uh, fresh consumption, now if you can see how the system is different, it's a system uh, that is from uh, 50 centimeters from the floor and pick up the, the floor to avoid the use of uh, any kind of ladders or platforms that could increase uh, the price of the harvesting. This is, uh, we have done it in a planting frame of five by four. 
Uh, we have a low ba base in the fresh consumption in the area of uh, uh, irrigation. Without uh, drip irrigation, we can't have uh, a, a good uh, shape of the fruit because in Extremadura or in the national market, the minimum is about 40 grams per uh, fig. With this system and depending on the variety, we have uh, uh, studied a uh, damalti, uh, that is a Croatian uh, variety, Cuello damo blanco, that is Italian variety, or Cadocro, San Antonio, that is characteristic, uh, that is from Extremadura, or the Albacore, that is uh, the one from uh, uh, Balearic Island, but uh, we, also, we call it also Black Michelin, is a variety that is one of the oldest, Montserrat that will speak about it, about this, right? Well, depending on the variety, the, pro, the average uh, fig yield range from uh, 17 tones to 30 tones per hectare. This system uh, of low base from the, to optimize the harvesting system um, uh, you must go in the in the different uh, tree. It's difficult to work in this condition, and at the same time, you just uh, have a shade as well. So, considering all these elements, we thought about uh, optimizing this system with uh, the uh, this system that we have here. We plant. We have a planting frame four by four with 625 trees per hectare with drip irrigation with plants that are about two meters high. It is very important to have a north-south orientation to have the best uh, uh, insulation system. And with this uh, system, you can see how the pruning, well, they look like uh, um, uh, vineyards, uh, it is a very, we only do it with two branches in this system. What we have obtained, depending on the variety and the fifth leaf, we have a higher production per kilo than in the system in vase. Uh, in the albacore uh, variety, we had a difference of 500 and 600 kilometers per hectare, more than in goblet. And what we have uh, observed is also a higher solid solids content due to the greater fruit insulation. And uh, we wanted to just to give you some uh, uh, ideas of all the different studies that we have done. You can visit us. You can establish contact with us. We can be in touch either by email or by the website. And this work is the fruit of, of a group or uh, the, 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 the group Fruticultura Mediterranean and Sicilian in collaboration with NTIX. And thank you to all of you for your attention. And I hope that it has been interesting for you. Thank you. Thank you, Margarita. So we can move to the next speaker, Professor Aizin Kuden from uh, Kukurova University. Her presentation is entitled Phenotyping Analysis of Potted Fee Plants Exposed to Drought and, st and, and So Stress and Adult Figs Phenotypes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I would like to thank, the, uh, first of all, to all of you, to Marga, Margarita, and all the organizers, all his, her colleagues, for this uh, beautiful organization. Uh, and I will now give some information on the stress uh, studies uh, we are carrying on in this uh, FIGGAM project. 
Uh, I will present the valorizing diversity of the fig tree, an ancient uh, fruit crop for, uh, uh, in, in this FICAN uh, project, phenotyping analysis. In this project, uh, uh, we have task 2.2. Two. Uh, it aims to characterize at phenotype, uh, phenotypic level of uh, 270 fig genotypes from germplasm banks, or local crops located in Spain, Turkey, and Tunisia. In addition, another uh, goal is to select 20 genotypes uh, tolerant to drought and salinity conditions and with traits of uh, plant and fruit expected stakeholders. Uh, to achieve these objectives, two years' data have been collected during the first two years of the project uh, to, in order to minimize environmental effects. In this presentation, I will summarize phenotypic analysis, data processing and results from first-year phenotyping, and adult plants uh, and uh, propagated plants subjected to drought and salt treatments. Uh, prop propagated 18 months uh, old plants were used in these uh, three drought experiments in Tunisia, in uh, Spain and Turkey. Uh, number of genotypes was uh, 52 in Spain, uh, 116 in Turkey and uh, 110 in Tunisia. Uh, from uh, these, uh, the chlorophyll content, relative water content, uh, RVC, and growth-related uh, traits were also collected. Uh, phenotypic analysis on propagated plant uh, water stress experiment, uh, if I mention. In each country, four pro uh, propagated plants per genotypes were irrigated normally according to water consumption, while other plants were irrigated uh, with 70% of consumption. Uh, the experiments uh, lasted about 50 days. Uh, during the experiment, relative water content, RVC, and leaf temperature, chlorophyll uh, content, spot values, uh, have been taken at three times point, uh, points at the start, at midpoint one and midpoint two. Under water stress conditions, one of the leaf mechanisms is the stomatal uh, closure, uh, which may increase la, uh, leaf temperature due to the reduction of transpiration. So leaf temperature is an indirect parameter related to water status, linked to transpiration process. Uh, plants are water stressed if temperature increases due to uh, transpiration reduction. Uh, growth parameters such as plant height and stem diameter, the total number of leaves were measured at the beginning or at, and at the end of the experiment. Uh, phenotypic data were processed following these steps, temperature, uh, the, uh, to obtain an indirect estimation of water uh, st uh, status linked to transpiration. For each plant, uh, temperature of fully expanded leaves has been managed as follows. It is seen in the uh, below. Uh, spot values of fully expanded leaf from each replicate and control and stress plants was collected at T15 midpoint 1 and T30 midpoint 2. Then uh, mean uh, spot values uh, were collected. Uh, also RVC uh, leaf samples also from a fully expanded leaf uh, from each replicate of control and stress, stress plants were collected and immediately weighed. Uh, plant uh, water status was uh, estimated by measuring relative uh, water content. Also leaf number, uh, was also plant height, stem diameter were also uh, measured. Uh, after the, this first uh, data uh, processing for each trait, uh, values from single replicate have been collected. After that, the median and the four replicates of control and the median of the four, uh, four replicates of stress plants were calculated. Finally, to evaluate the variation between control and stress plants, the difference between the two median values were calculated, obtaining a value for each genotypes. The final values for each of the six traits were sorted in descending order in the case of uh, temperature in ascending order for the remaining traits, thus obtaining six rank rankings. We used the uh, statistical software of JAMP uh, Pro. Uh, so the statistical analysis from each uh, ranking related to each trait, susceptible and tolerant genotypes have been separated 
allowing to uh, identify for each rate for each experiment possible water stress tolerant genotypes. We'll see uh, on the table uh, later on. Uh, summary of drought experiment results in Spain. Uh, the drought stress trial was uh, carried out at the Systex facilities and started on 2 August uh, 2021 and ended 15, 14 September with a duration of 50 days. Uh, for each genotype, four control and four stress plants were placed in parallel rows uh, before the start of the trial period, especially seven days before starting the drought stress test. Every seven days, water consumption was uh, calculated using a reference eight genotypes with different morphological traits such as number of leaves, total leaf area, and vigor. Uh, two plant, uh, I will not give the detail of the uh, experiment, but this, these results are from Spain. Uh, control plants were irrigated daily, uh, summarizing the experiment. During the experiment, air temperature values ranged from uh, 19, 20 degrees uh, to uh, 28, 29 degrees uh, centigrade. Instead, uh, leaf temperature values ranged from 15, 16, or to 23 to 25 degrees centigrade. Regarding spot values, RVC values, also uh, there uh, some um, genotypes were uh, uh, determined so for spot uh, D. Ray and Bianca Canaria. Uh, spot values with um, 38, and for relative water content, Bianca and D. Ray. Uh, were so showing the highest values, 90%. Uh, morphologic parameters were also determined, and you see in the uh, table, uh, you see the um, genotypes uh, for six traits of uh, tolerance uh, to water stress of uh, Spanish genotypes. Uh, some of them show five, uh, tolerant to five uh, traits. Uh, if we um, summarize the uh, drought experiment results in Turkey, uh, we also, uh, the pot experiment was carried out uh, under field conditions at the FIG Research Institute, Aydın Research Institute uh, in Aydın. Uh, and uh, the irrigation water application was started on the 20th June and stopped at 9th of August 2021. The duration of the drought experiment was the same, 50 days. Four control and four stress plants were uh, placed in parallel rows. I will uh, get this through. Um, you see the uh, plants uh, in the orchard. Uh, also, during the experiment, air temperature value ranging from 27, 28 to 41, 42 degrees centigrade. It was too high that summertime. Uh, and the leaf temperature values ranged from 22, 23 to uh, 39, 40 degrees centigrade. Also, we have done all the uh, analyzers. Genotypes with the lowest cooling ability were 319 Osman Yeli and 333 Tarak uh, uh, for about 80 degrees centigrade for genotypes. Also, we uh, also obtained uh, RVC water relative content, uh, number of leaves, plant height, plant uh, stem diameter. And you see the table. Uh, we found that except RVC, uh, like uh, Yeshilgüz uh, genotype, uh, were tolerant to for eight traits, eight, uh, sorry, five traits, sorry, <laughs> uh, for five traits, uh, except RVC. These are the um, tolerance table uh, of the genotypes. For the Tunisia, the experiments, uh, drought experiments in Tunisia, uh, the similar uh, procedures were also, all the same steps were carried out in Tunisia. They uh, began uh, on 27th of July and finished 18th of September 2021. Uh, same procedures were carried out and uh, morphological parameters, number of leaves, plant eye, also, SPED and uh, RVC values were determined. You see the uh, table 
of um, the experiment genotypes tolerance to uh, six traits you see one of the uh, Taurusi uh, genotype was tolerant to all six traits. It was so interesting for also some of the varieties. The, if we consider the salinity experiment uh, tests carried out uh, 30 months old potted plants in June, this is for, uh, in our conditions, Turkey, uh, June, July, and August in 2022, in three experiment countries, Spain, Tunisia, and Turkey. Uh, in the study, in, uh, in our country, 30 month old potted plants we used, uh, 115 uh, fig genotypes were used as plant material. Uniform plants were transferred into nine liter uh, plastic bags and with um, peat and perlite uh, medium. Uh, two different salinity levels were investigated all in three countries uh, in the experiment, which was carried out uh, in four replications. The applications discussed in the study are given below. Uh, control plants uh, not exposed to any salinity uh, stress, and application to plants subjected to 100 millimolar salinity uh, stress. And the results in Spain, uh, you see the, uh, some um, uh, uh, genotypes are showing uh, tolerance to four traits. Zuli uh, Verdeja. Uh, sorry more for my pronunciation. <laughs> it's not so easy. Uh, and uh, results of Turkey. And some of the genotypes show uh, five uh, tolerant genotypes, five traits. And uh, also uh, Tunisia, some genotypes also show uh, tolerance to salt stress for several traits in Tunisian uh, genotypes. Summary of uh, phenotypic analysis, you see uh, for Spain, two genotypes show both drought and salt stress. Uh, for Tur Turkey, uh, several genotypes, I think, dirtish. and uh, 15 genotypes were uh, salt and drought stress, and in Tunisia, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten genotypes were uh, drought and salt uh, salinity stress. Uh, they showed salinity stress. Uh, phenotypic analysis in adult uh, plants, if we consider uh, this, a little bit of this, because I have not the uh, uh, photos of uh, Spanish or Tunisian cultivars, so I only mentioned about the uh, Turkish ones. In summer 2021, also phenotypic analysis on mother plants of a part of two, uh, 270 genotypes have been carried out in Spain, Sistex, Tunisia, uh, UTM, and Turkey, CU. But also we have Aydın, uh, Aydın Research Institute. The main genetic germplasm um, collection is there in Aydın. Uh, 52 genotypes from Spain, uh, 105 uh, female and 11 male genotypes from Turkey and uh, sorry, Tunisian. Uh, not getting. Uh, can I uh, take it uh, back, please? Can you please? I couldn't. And uh, one more, please. And 60 out of 110 genotypes for Tunisian. Uh, for each genotype analyzed, uh, 26 phenoty phenotypic traits. Uh, the phenotypic uh, analysis carried out in three countries, focusing mainly on parameters such as weight, firmness, osteol, uh, weight, juiciness, harvesting date, maturation date. 
uh, maturation index and resistance to crack. Uh, these parameters are among those suggested uh, by stakeholders during the first living lab organized in Spain, Tur uh, Tunisia and Turkey. Uh, and uh, you see some of our varieties, uh, Turkish varieties, uh, such as you see the um, genotype numbers and the names of some varieties here. Uh, and uh, phenotypic analysis, what we have done on the adult plants in three countries, the genotypes of the three countries are shown here. Uh, we have uh, get the data for 26 uh, phenotypic characters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kuden. And now it's time for the first presentation uh, from, uh, from a Tunisian partner. I hope, uh, it, hi, here. <laughs> we ca can we hear, huh? Professor Gada Baraket from the Faculty of Science of Tunis in uh, the University of uh, Tunis El Manar. Can you speak, please? We cannot uh, hear you, I'm sorry. Okay. 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 She can start? Okay. Firstly, firstly, I thank the whole Spanish team for the organization of our workshop and all the partners of our projects, and especially Professor Tommaso Giordani and all those uh, present for their trust. I go, I'm going to present a part of our project entitled the usefulness of the transdisciplinary approach for a sustainable commercial production of the fig tree in the Mediterranean region in relation to climate change, which a part of work page one, participatory assessment of potential of fig genotype. We programmed three living labs during the three years of our project. So, uh, why, uh, why are meetings uh, with stakeholders organi orga uh, organized? Because the encounter of experts in agriculture and food economy, agronomy, genetics, bioinformatics, ex situ conservation of germplas, weed, breeders, nurseries, growers, consumers, and marketing companies, ensuring that vegan output. Uh, uh, will be exploited and will have significant impact in uh, Medi Mediterranean countries. In the first living lab, the first living lab aimed to identify the most important function trait that the selected cultivar should have to find to find among local farmers genotypes to be added uh, to those that uh, analyze it in work page two. The process of phenotyping, genotyping, of course, here bring to the development of a draft catalog of selected fig cultivars. This catalog uh, be shown to stakeholders during uh, the second living lab. It contains a description of cultivars selected on the basis of three indicated by the stakeholders during the first living labs. It be evaluated by users who will be asked to select the most promising cultivars. A final step of cultivars will be selected and a definitive catalog with their characteristics will be, uh, will be developed. A third living lab be organized, organized with stakeholder, stakeholders to evaluate selected cultivars and to gather further information on their potential and on the problems and opportunities for introducing them in value chain. 
the genotypes chosen will be made available to the users for evaluation in the field trial. The first living labs organi uh, organized in the three countries, Tunisia, Spain, and Turkey in March and April 2021 by video conference. 11 stakeholders responded to the invitation and were present during our living lab in Tunisia, belonging to different categories of domains, industries, agriculture, agro-industries, research and innovation, administration, service and, uh, and transport. Also, 11 stakeholders participated in the living lab organized, organized uh, um, in Spain and 10 uh, in the living lab organized in Turkey. We adopted the Delphi method during our two living labs. It's a method for structuring a group communication process effectively to deal with a complex problem. It relies on a panel of experts to obtain the most reliable consensus of their opinion. It's a valid tool to support decision-making process through the involvement and engagement stakeholders. The multi-step process to perform a Delphi, a Delphi study is implemented through different sequential writing rounds. In round zero, preliminary survey, discussion and refinement of the living lab focal question. In the, uh, the round one, uh, the first round uh, composed by three steps. The step one, facilitators share questionnaire with finalists. Uh, finalists uh, in step two, finalists give responses survey back to researcher. In, uh, uh, step three, uh, facilitators compute the median and UQR for each uh, attempt. The round two uh, is uh, composed also by three steps. The step four, facilitators share questionnaires two with finalists. This questionnaire con contains each attempt writing and UQR from out output of questionnaire one. In the step five, finalists give responses and survey back to researcher. In the step six, facilitators, uh, facilitators compute the, now, the new median and UQR uh, ranges. In the final step, facilitators share summary of final results to finalists once uh, the, the data analysis is done. I show you in the slide the results the median, the median and UQR. The median and uh, the median and UQR of the right given by participants to attempt concern concerning fruit for uh, fresh. No. I show you in this slide the results of the median and UQR of the right given by participants to item concerning cultivar uh, three. In Tunisian, uh, the Tunisian participant shows that the resistance to drought, resistance to parasite, uh, and yield are the most important parameters to obtain fruit of good quality and a good product. The Spanish stakeholders choose the The study stakeholders choose that the partenocarpic, non partenocarpic yield and harvesting date are the most uh, three. Regarding now the median and OPR of the right given by participants to attempt concerning fruit for fresh conception. 
we noticed that the all the Tunisian stakeholders confirmed the all of the parameters except for some trees such as fruit ribs and neck lamp. Similar, similarly, for the Spanish stakeholders, which were confirmed the importance of the all tree except skin fruit ribs and neck lamp were not important. Confirmed also by Turkey stakeholders, which have chosen the totality of three as important except only the ground color, uh, color uh, parameters. Let's ask now return to the results of the median and PPR of the right given by participants to items concerning fruit for dry consumption. The Tunisian stakeholders found that all the parameters mentioned are very important for uh, the dried fig, except for the three fruit ribs that they find it's not important. Some results by Spanish, Spanish team were obtained and confirmed that only the ease of filling Three was not important. Finally, the Turkish participant chose uh, only seven parameters was important, and the question for dry conception were reduced because considered not switchable. Regarding now the median and OKR of the right given by participant to attempts concerning fruit for preserved conception, the Tunisian and Spanish stakeholders choose the majority of three were important except skin fruit ribs and other color were not important. This questionnaire has not carried out because in Turkey, conservative figs are not important. The second living lab were organized also in the three countries in March 2023. 14 stakeholders were present for the living lab in Tunisia, 16 for the living lab in Spain, and 11 participants for the living lab in Turkey. Some Delphi method is used and two questionnaires were distributed to the participants concerning the characteristics of fruit and cultivars. Based on the characteristics of the fruit, the most important cultivars for the Tunisian stakeholders are Zigi, uh, Zigi Kesra and uh, the Capri Fig. Based on the characteristics of the cultivar, always find the cultivar ZG Kesra is the first choice for the all uh, for the all stays, stakeholders. All other genotypes have intermediate, median, and PPR values. For the Spanish stakeholders, and based on characteristics of the fruit, the most important cultivars are Clon 300, Panadrea, and Panaki. Uh, noting that. These three cultivars are before you. The sum results obtained based on the characteristics of the cultivar. For the Tur Turkish stakeholders, uh, and based of uh, on the characteristics of the fruit, the, the, the most important cultivars are uh, 1,008 uh, Yizim 1,005 Super in Siri, 1,029 Sari uh, Lop, and 1,045 Murgus. The sum, the sum cultivars were selected based on characteristics of the cultivar, adding the variety uh, 709 Yizil more. In conclusion, all the participants showed their interests interested, interested in the result of vegan project, and most of them were interested in testing these varieties in their field. They were also interested, interested in the possibility of visiting the German bank and getting to know these varieties. We noticed that at the end of living lab, the majority of the stakeholders were satisfied and asked us for the organization of living lab and the importance of the subject addressed in order to improve the cultivation of fig trees in Tunisia and in the Mediterranean basin and that this species requires enhancement and conservation. Young farmers were motivated to choose plant fix in his own project and started for this year to plant a new variety traditionally adapted to his vision and uh, left all the rest of the plantation uh, after the results of our project for well selected the varieties best suited to water and salt stress. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Gada. Thank you, Tomaso.
Thank you, Gada, for giving our uh, explanation of the importance of the involvement of stakeholders uh, in the selection of, uh, of seed cultivars. And now uh, it's time for the second speakers from the same universities, uh, mm, the Faculty of Science of Tunis and the University of Tunis in Tunisia, Dr. Sara Farr. Sar. Sar, can you hear me? You have to wait some minutes. Is are connected? Yes? Yeah. No video, not audio. So we we have to move in the, in the next uh, speaker. Okay, so there is a problem in the connection from uh, from Tunisia, I suppose. So I ask uh, uh, Montserrat, but uh, Montserrat, yes, <laughs> you are here. So, so we we can move for the next speaker, Montserrat Ponce Buscana, responsible for the Fig German Plants Bank of the Balearic Island in Spain. In Spain, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, have a talk by it is uh, autochthonous to the Balearic Island field of, of some moods now. So, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning. My presentation is going to deal of the uh, uh, variety autochthonous to the Balearic Island field of sun, not now. That we could be speaking for hours about it, so but I have to to uh, reduce it in a few minutes, and I hope that will be adapted to give you a criteria of how uh, uh, how uh, this uh, how it is in our island. The main objective of the project or the of uh, so new to know is the number four plantation conservation and maintenance of uh, the all different cultivars of I of the island nowadays we have three thousand two hundred fig trees to with a lot of varieties of the different continent you can see it on the chart from Asia America. Uh, and one concept, passional, that is the one of emblematic ones, and that we'll see later on. I have to thank Fernando Perez, his great contribution to my uh, assessment, uh, because he made me understand that, that what is important is my life, it must, my passion should be of the preservation in the uh, Balearic Island because the RS can uh, be for the rest of the Montserrat Pond in this moment, give importance to the 242 autochthonous uh, varieties. Uh, here we have uh, the uh, the crop here. We have in Balearic Island, we have five islands. Each island has uh, uh, its own crop, its, uh, its historic uh, uh, heritage. And uh, here we have the, char the main uh, characteristics. We have big fig 
uh, trees or yards, where what is important, uh, apart from the different uh, uh, cattle breeding uh, of uh, pork, uh, of uh, pigs and uh, horses, etc., we had these three. Ibiza, there, there wasn't uh, any fig tree uh, due to the uh, the crop uh, cultivation, we had a, a, an alternation between fig trees and almond trees. In Formentera, there are a little precipitation and uh, with rain in the north. In the, so we had this, this extensive uh, uh, vegetation. We had a fig trees. It had the blank of Tony Mestra and it has 140 stallion and uh, uh, you, you can see them here variety of fermentera the most well known is the blanca and they use all this structure to 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 have the cattle under them and to avoid the, the great um, um, wind from the north in menorca uh, there is no real egg tree, but only egg trees for Okyard. You have just one egg that is surrounded in a, in a little wall uh, here of uh, now salt no, that is the area. Oh, here we can see the different, there are three sectors. We have 3,200 uh, trees, and uh, each sector uh, give a priority uh, of each um, variety. Here we are at entrance. Then we have a nursery of emblematic fig trees. This is the, the, the beginning of this passion. Each variety, it's a cultivar, has a culture, a history, an identity. The, uh, uh, the one uh, that was from uh, uh, where Che Guevara was from. Uh, so uh, so uh, we have uh, fig trees from the Inquisition period, different uh, uh, fig trees with uh, some with religious uh, history, another one where Buddha had his illumination. Uh, we have all the different, well, every fig tree has a history or a culture, as I said before. It doesn't work. Well. Now we have a collection in the field with the fig trees from the collection of uh, Bailaric Island, 242 varieties cultivar. They are planted. Uh, they are planted uh, with uh, a planting frame seven by four, two, two fig tree of each uh, variety. Um, so we have, uh, in, uh, according to some specificities, we might have seven uh, different varieties in some framing, a uh, planting frame. Can you do it for me, please? Here, uh, listening uh, to uh, the premises of Fernando, we have uh, done. Uh, during three years, we have been working on that. Here, this plantation, uh, we have a, a drip irrigated system, and all the 242 varieties are here, uh, two uh, fig tree of each. Here, we have one year. This, uh, the same varieties are one year old, two of each variety, and this is a replica uh, of the Balearic uh, Island variety as well. And here, another replica of the plantation of the, and uh, they are six months old. Here we have the 
the different uh, nursery. We have uh, trees from other countries. We we have them uh, in during three years. We are studying them for three years. If the health, the sanitary uh, research is uh, good, we just plant them. Here we have to this year's plantation. We have uh, really got. Uh, uh, a passion, and we have created it to sell them, all of them from Mallorca, and it is a way to maintain the, the field because we don't have help from the government. Uh, here we have a pro process to mark with the different holes. This is the one that we use for the planting, two by two and 280. We go until the uh, here we put land, new land, uh, new ground, sorry, and the plantation. We always uh, use a branch of three years, and we put them in the hole. We have a little part, that, and with the growing of two or three years, it comes uh, out. This will be the new fig tree. The, the, the pruning is drastic, you can see. And it is a way, we call it a Mallorquina system. It's, it, it, so, so it is uh, from, uh, we call it a system of foot and ladder because it, we have three branches where we could put the ladder and the foot and the feet, yeah. So we are not interested in the consumption. We want to preserve the collection. That's why we make a, a pruning, a drastic pruning to make it, uh, uh, to give it strength. Uh, the type of different uh, system um, uh, with, uh, with those change, uh, we do it on uh, uh, All Saints Day. Uh, the fertilizer uh, is always done with uh, uh, organic uh, fertilizer. Uh, here we have the harvesting is mainly family. We don't have aspirator, nothing. Uh, everything is uh, family done. Uh, this is the first uh, harvesting very similar to the one that we have in the south of France and Italy. This, is, uh, this comes in the fir first 15 days of May. This is, this, this is the use uh, to, to, to use for the uh, fig bread. This is a tradition from uh, Mallorca. And here the, there are products that we uh, uh, confitted uh, figs. Um, figs uh, in the oven, baked, a dry fig, uh, a dry fig with uh, anise, uh, a bre a fig bread, um, pate of bread, um, white brandy of bread, uh, jam, fig jam, champagne of uh, fig, wine, fig wine. Uh, why, um, fig uh, oil, fig uh, beer, uh, fig vinegar, and white brandy of fig, and and uh, um, coffee, fig coffee. That is is a is a coffee that doesn't have uh, caffeine. It is really fantastic. It's a formula from the First World War where there was no uh, coffee, and they did this with a uh, toasted uh, fig. Here we have a study made from the Balearic Island to assess the product of the cafe because it doesn't have caffeine. It can be used as a medicine for cholesterol, triglycerides, chlorosis. This is an uh, issue. At, mm, we made a study at the University of Mexico with an application of, uh, to, to cover the commercialization period in fresh. We pick up the, we harvest the fish, and in 15 days, we maintain it with this system through tannin and uh, different uh, elements. So here, these are the variety, the octoctonous uh, figs. Uh, 
here from the Lepitius, uh, Ibiza, and Formentera in Mallorca. There are all of them, but there are some varieties that are unique, like Ibernal Capoma, La Borgogna, La Banca. There are varieties that are unique uh, in the Pitius Islands, in the island of uh, uh, Ibiza. Here in Menorca, these, vari these varieties uh, in 1888, He, he made a catalog of the different figs from uh, Menorca. All of them have disappeared. The ones that we, uh, the other one that uh, uh, Montserrat Prons has here in Cabrera. I don't know if you know the island of Cabrera. There are six square meters. There is only one variety. In Mallorca, we have a catalog of of different uh, uh, description with the shape that the, uh, and, and this is very interesting. Here we have the, the, the one that are kind of like a turbine, uh, La Blanca La Verdal, that is uh, really resistant to the draft and uh, salinity. Uh, Verdal is the most resistant. Uh, De la Señora, Bordis Roche, Carolina Nagra, and so you can see the name. In the, the, the first, uh, Carmina, is the one that came to, Valerie, uh, to the Balearic Island in, 12, in the 12,000, and we call it the Martinent uh, fig tree. I see uh, all the four varieties, Calabraceta, uh, that is different from the one in Extremadura, Alicantina, Roja, that is from Arabic origin, and Ortella. Et, uh, Alas Conicas, Alcantina Negra, uh, Curcurela, Albar Corcomuna, that, is, uh, uh, that has uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, stripes, and this is only, it is only exists in Balearic Island because of the humidity concept, Albacor. Uh, Balanca, that is a unique, uh, it is uh, uh, from Naral, after Manacor. Then we have Piliformes, we have the Cabrera, Andreva, Col de Alma Branca, y Tiapaña. Uh, la, las que son the ones that are flatter, uh, Mare, and uh, we have the spheric one, so we have the Carolina, uh, uh, Cosme Baño is very sensitive to the draft and salinity. So it's very, uh, it, it has without uh, um, leaves until October. And it is from my village. Here, uh, there's a different period of maturation that are very early, early in uh, August. This is not a catalog, very early in May. So you have these four variety. I'm not going to say the name because you have them. So these ones that are also very early, they are in the first uh, 15 days of May. Uh, those ones are brevas, what we call brevas, they come in June, para uh, tal, brava flor de la reina y du de perdu. Uh, those one bodies are blanca negra that has a genetics that is very important. Uh, they start uh, white and they end up in dark. A dif the different three. Then the ones that are come later, we have here the names, so the four one, they are very used for the uh, cattle because when they drop, they are dry already. So we use them for the, for the cattle. Uh, the, the ones that come later, six cellies, Six cellies means from the next seven is the one that is uh, most uh, uh, vivid. Victoria de la Señora de la Raca. And uh, from the, the latest one, we have the, those four. Now the varieties that are very particular, we have the singulars and the rhym rhyming ones. Five uh, varieties. The um, singular ones, we have the triple uh, splits. It gives three harvest. So we can see it here. Only the first one is the good for eating, the other are for the animals. Tofola is unique, it's original from a village. 
and it's in its branch it has three type of uh, of figs uh, uh, one that never gets uh, ripe, uh, one that is shape, triangle shape, now it's called the Dama Blanca. It is a variety. They are white and black in the same uh, branch. So you can see it here, as well here. And now the uh, rhyming, what you call the rhyming varieties. So you have all the names. Parajal Rimada. Calderama Rimada is an excellent variety. We can see it here. Martinenka Rimada. And here, to end up, we have made a, st a comparative study of the maturity so that we can see the, the, the we start with the first one with the uh, uh, stripes that are very particular and without. So. You can see them in the different line, the different striping, and the one, the Borisan one, you, you can see he start the variety uh, with stripe and striped. So you can see all of them. Here, Margarita. I just want to say thank you to Margarita Lopez, Coralia Fernando Perez, mainly uh, because I've been a great help and uh, their friendship. And uh, that's the, the last uh, slide. It's more sentimental. In these slides photography, you can see all my intervention, the fig tree, the ladder, the, the basket, all the culture, history, a patrimony, an heritage and a, of, a, of a population of the uh, Balearic Island that has been part of our existence and from our ancestor to now uh, to guarantee the continuity of this treasure of nature. Thank you. Thank you, Monserrat. Very nice presentation. I don't know if uh, <clears throat> you were able to to contact uh, um, Sarah Farr. Is she connected? No? Yes? One moment. I don't know. Okay, yes. You have to wait some minutes. You can pass in the next. Uh, okay, Sarah, we can hear you. So, Sarah, we, we, we will do a talk. Usefulness of molecular marker in the characterization of two spontaneous and cultivated compartments of the fig tree in Tunisia. Please, uh, Sarah, the floor is yours. We can see Gada, Gada Baraket. He has problem with the connection. He, he has problem with so the connection. It's impossible move. because they connect, 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 and then as you see, problem. Okay, perfect. There are um, many problems of connection with Sar. We are we are sorry. So it is time to to have a coffee break. 
and to taste uh, some uh, spe uh, specialist from uh, Montserrat, okay? <laughs> but uh, anyway, during the, the coffee break, uh, a poster vision, vision is possible. Uh, we have uh, uh, about, uh, we have five posters that uh, has, um, will be presented in the screen, okay? Thank you.
I think we can continue our section. We have, we have uh, Sara Farr from the University of Tunis, from Tunisia. Oh, welcome, Sar. The floor is yours. The presentation of uh, Sar is the usefulness of molecular markets in the characterization of, of two spontaneous and cultivated compartments of the fig tree in Tunisia. So please, thank you, Sar, to be here. The floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry for uh, the day. Uh, I am Sahar Hafar, uh, doctor of, from uh, uh, University of Tunis Al Manar and a membership of the uh, Tunisian uh, Partners. Today, I will present you. Uh, some of my works titled Usefulness of Molecular Marker in the Characterization of Two Spontaneous and Cultivated Compartments of Fig Tree in Tunisia. Fig tree, uh, uh, called uh, Alsophicus carica, belongs to the order of uh, uh, urticals and the family of Moraceae with over of 100, 100 species of ficus. And Ficus carica is a typical fruit of the Mediterranean area. Uh, in the nature, we can find uh, two uh, groups of fig, or two types, the cultivated form and the spontaneous or, or, or the wild form. Ficus carica uh, is, uh, uh, in the nature, is, uh, uh, is morphologically, uh, morpho in the tree morphology is uh, uh, genodic and qualified with functionally, functionally uh, diocesis. Uh, we can find the uh, female tree and the male tree. The culture of the fig is very important in Tunisia. We can find it all over the country, and it's uh, well adapted to the uh, to our uh, ecological uh, condition. And uh, the uh, the production of uh, fig is about uh, thirty uh, million ton. Uh, the, the spontaneous fig tree in Tunisia uh, were found. In rocks, in a uh, slipped uh, valley, but uh, and, uh, to, not too deep, and we can find it usually along uh, the river banks. Uh, in Tunisia, uh, the main region uh, where we can find the, uh, the wild fig tree are the Hawaria, uh, Lille de Galit, and uh, Kokna Island. However, uh, uh, the fig uh, tree in Tunisia uh, are facing a lot of uh, problems such as uh, disease and pests uh, and the selection of uh, some varieties. Uh, also, the uh, biotic and uh, ab uh, abiotic stresses due to the uh, climate changes, which uh, um, produce uh, for uh, uh, a high ero genetic erosion. And some of, uh, a lot of our varieties were uh, disparate. The main objective of this work is to uh, characterize, uh, evaluate, and conservate the Tunisian fig tree using uh, two uh, targeted gene systems, such as Scott and Ergia,
62 accession of the fig species were uh, collected from different regions of Tunisia, including 21 uh, wild and 33 cultivated. The, uh, the, um, these two marker system uh, are the uh, excuse me the resistant gene analog uh, uh, markers are designed are designed use, usually uh, you using the conserved motif of the nucleotide binding site and the leucine rich repeat LLR and uh, the protein kinase domain of the gene which are the most likely to be targeted for gene resistance. Concer concerning the start code and targeted, uh, it's uh, um, based on a short cons uh, conserved region surrounding the translation initiation code. These two, these two markers were uh, very effective in uh, genotyping and uh, and. Um, uh, uh, evaluation of the polymorphism. There is the, uh, the results of the uh, the, uh, the polymorphism and the genetic diversity show a high a high level of uh, percentage of uh, polymorphic bound, which is eighty six point eighty eight percent which show that uh, these uh, markers are effective in uh, um, studying the, uh, the polymorphism. So, uh, a high level of polymorphism was detected among the Tunisian genotypes. The genetic diversity parameters such as uh, number of effective allele were 1.5, the NE index and the index of uh, Shannon were, were very high also among the groups, which illustrate the important genetic uh, chain exchanges between the cultivated and the wild fig Tunisian compartment. The molecular variance was also tested and show that 87% of the genetic variation was distributed among the groups. The combined data matrix was used to uh, construct the uh, Epogeama dendrogram based on the similarity, similarity matrix between the 62 fig trees and uh, the topology of the dendrogram suggests that the diversity was uh, divided from, uh, based on the, uh, the, the sex of the fig tree, common or capri fig, and the type, uh, uh, wild or cultivated, but independently of the uh, origin of the fig tree. The principal coordinate analysis was also uh, done, and we can found the same groups such as the EPGMA, which confirm the, result, the results obtained previously. A correlation between the matrix uh, using the, uh, the marker SCOT and RGA was also uh, used, and we can found a, a, a positive and a significant uh, correlation between the two marker systems which prove that uh, these two systems uh, targeted uh, some, uh, region, some um, close region in the genome of the fig tree. In conclusion, uh, these, the two system markers were very informative and effective in the uh, study of the genetic diversity between the two, the two compartments of the fig tree. And this prove the uh, efficacy of uh, these uh, the, the new uh, system markers such as Scott and RGA. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sarge, for this nice presentation.
I'm sorry. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you again, Mr. Bichia. Thank you. So, we can move to the next speaker. He, he comes from Italy, Dr. Paolo Belloni, responsible for the FIG German France Bank I Giardini di Pomona in Apulia, in the southern of, uh, of Italy. So, please, Paolo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Um, Paolo Belloni, 30 years ago, I founded the Giardini Pomona, the National Association for the Enhancement of Biodiversity. We have always that uh, with the recovery and conservation of traditional fruits varieties. Pomona was the Latin goddess who protect gardens and orchards. The Giardini in Pomona is a private structure founded through tourist hospitality, guided tours, and the sale of product, product uh, processed on the farm. The Giardini in Pomona covers an area of about 10 hectares. Yes. Scusami, sono Tommaso. Ciao. Sì. Eh, senti, no, non vediamo la presentazione, però dovresti, ah. dovresti far partire la presentazione e metterla in modalità presentazione, se possibile. Che noi stiamo vedendo soltanto te, ti ascoltiamo molto bene, però non vediamo. No, non, non la vedi? Non la vedete? La vedi adesso? La vedete? No. Eh, de devi condividere la presentazione. Share presentation. There is a link. Uh, there is, uh, there is a, a link or a taste. Uh. Share, share presentation. Se clicchi lì dovresti, dovremmo vedere. Uh, ok, bravo, perfetto. Ok, ora vediamo. Perfetto, perfetto. Puoi continuare. Va bene. Inizio. Allora. Eh, vedete? The Giardini di Pomona covers an area of about 10 hectares. Pomona APS, a social promotion association, has three priority purposes to pass on the, to the future generation, the enormous heritage of cultivated plants selected over the millennia by hundreds of generations of farmers. The careful use of water by the restoration of the wood system of the cistern presence in the various camp, the renaturalize, to renaturalize the soil that are adding towards desertification. Over 1,000 varieties of ancient fruit are present, preserved here. The varieties, which at least date uh, of 1950, include uh, 150 pomegranates, 96 pears, 58, uh, 58, uh, sorry, 58 ap apple trees, 57 persimmon, 56 almond trees, 52 plums, uh, 45 uh, historical citrus fruits, 33 grapes, 25 nuts, 22 apricots, 18 cherry trees, 
10 Peugeot, 10 Mulberries, 9 Quincy's, 7 Azerol, 7 Jujaba, uh, 5 uh, German Medlars, 3 Loquat, 3 Melanchir Canadensis. I Giardini for Monaco operated with the network of Apulian permaculturists. Our food forest integrate the conservation of biodiversity with the principle of saving use of water. The Pomona PS has announced that the school food education project with the Regione Lombardia. Continuous attention is devoted to environmental education through guided tours, Erasmus project, and the workshop for the little one. The Pomona APS is well known for the pomological exhibition on ancient fruit created to show the richness of the Italian botanical heritage and the risks associated with the, its disappearance. For 20 years, from 93 and, uh, through 2013, the Pomona APS presents Italian fruits varieties from all over the peninsula at the international exhibition organized by Crocure de Pomme in France, uh, which is held every five years. The Giardini Pomona are well known uh, for their collection of 600 cultivars of figs and the Cossio, the Cossio collection of about 115 pomegranate varieties. But why figs? Because they are delicious fruits, healthy, highly energetic, easy to dry and to be preserved, and with great uh, versatility in uh, cooking. The good adaptability to climate change and good resistance to it, plus 45 degrees, 50 degrees, and cold, minus 14 degrees to minus 20, depending on the cultivar. The adaptability to cultivation in dry farming and the resistance to sadness and brackish air. This may cultivable many areas immediately facing the sea, not usable with other crops of fruit trees. The ability in uh, biferous cultivars to produce two different fruits at different time on the same tree, unique uh, characteristic among uh, the, the fruit trees It is a tree both easy to cultivate and to reproduce, even by those which know agronomic skills. It shows an extraordinary variability on the fruits in terms of skin and pulp color, shape and size of the fig, and allows you to enjoy the very extensive and diversified the range of flavors on each variety. We are interested in, in participating in all the project for the valorization of the Ficus carica species and have created two lines of produce dedicated to health and beauty. We intend the Inans uh, to enhance uh, all the parts of the plant, buds, leaves, latex, root. For example, we produce an alcohol glyceric, uh, glyceric extract from buds and one year old rotless uh, to create uh, a food supplement for the natural protection of the stomach and intestine. Thank you for your attention. My cat and I are waiting for you at Giardini Pomona. Okay, Paolo, thank Grazie. you for your nice presentation. Please stay with us until the end of the workshop, okay? Okay, okay.
So you can Thank move to the next presentation from Turkey. Uh, Dr. Oguzan Kaliskan from Mustafa Kamel University. Just a minute. Um, so we, are, we are sorry, the, we have a, a problem of connection, so we can move to the next presentation from uh, Olfa Sadud Debadi from the National Bank of Jeans in Tunisia. Is he connected? Okay. The, we have connection with <laughs> who is <laughs> who is connected? <laughs> We have a connection. I don't know who is connected. Dr. Oguzan or Dr. Olfa, who is connected? Uh, yes, Professor, I'm Lassan, I'm here. Also. Could you ask for me, Lassan, or something different? I didn't hear. Oguzan? I don't know if you... Ah, okay. Gassan Zaid? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. Yes, I'm here, Tom. So, could you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, we can hear you. So, thank you to be here, uh, Dr. Gassan Zaid from Kukuroba University. We'll uh, have a talk uh, titled Comparative Metabolome and Transcriptome Analysis of Anthocyanin Biosynthesis in Fig. Please, uh, Gassan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Tomaso. Uh, could you hear me? Uh, all of the participants are seeing my presentation. Yes, yes. Uh, could you? Uh, uh, can you see my presentation in front of your screen? Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, thank. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Dr. Gassan Zahed, and uh, I did my PhD from Chukrova University, Turkey. Uh, so. Uh, it's a topic of my PhD uh, thesis is a comparative metabolome and transcriptome analysis of anthocyanin biosynthesis in Ficus carica. Uh, and after that, the contents of my presentation includes the slight uh, introduction about the fig and what, uh, what is the aim and objectives of my research, uh, review of literature, uh, materials and methods, results and discussions, conclusion and recommendations. Because I have a limited time, so I can uh, skip uh, all those presentations quickly. 
so thanks for your patience. So actually, uh, fig uh, belongs from Morsi family and it's cultivated in the Mediterranean region in most of the parts. And uh, it's an important diet of the Turkish cuisine and it's used as a fresh and uh, dry uh, in form. And it's famous for their uh, soft texture, attractive colors, pleasant aroma and unique flavors are the key attributes to that. And uh, as we all know that uh, Turkey is the largest producer of uh, the fig in the world. And uh, apart from that, the second position gained by Egypt, Morocco, Iran, Algeria, Spain, and Syria, and then USA, Tunisia, and Afghanistan. Uh, here are the few pictures. Uh, and these uh, beautiful figs are sold into the local markets of uh, uh, Turkey, Adana. And here is the graph, uh, the most uh, cultivated part uh, contribution is the, from the city of Aydın and uh, Izmir contributed the most uh, production in Turkey. So uh, fig contains uh, phenolic compounds, uh, sugars, antioxidants, minerals, proteins, and uh, their benefit is to prevent heart and metabolic diseases, microbial infections, obesity, diabetes, and cancer in humans. And uh, it's also contained uh, phenolic compounds contain secondary metabolites, uh, which have the powerful antioxidant properties, and uh, it can also helpful for the prevention of pathological conditions associated with cancer, certain heart diseases, and vision problems and asthma as well. So, uh, what is the basic ingredients inside that? It's anthocyanin, and anthocyanin is a water-soluble uh, phenolic compound. Colors. Uh, its function is to give the color to the uh, fruit, and they are mostly found in the skin of the fruits. And anthocyanin are glycosides, which are flavonoid derivatives of the polypropanoid uh, pathway. And uh, the formation of anthocyanins and degradation of chlorophyll in the fruit skin usually begins during the second uh, rapid growth stage simultaneously with fruit ripening, sugar accumulation, and formation of other multiple quality traits. And uh, what is the benefit of that? It's make the fruit quality uh, trait sugar uh, after anthocyanin is another important trait. And uh, it's a major biochemical component of fruit is sugar and quantity of the sugar directly affects the fruit quality. And the third one is antioxidants, which are primary phenolics and present in all plant materials, including fruits, green leafy vegetables, bark, seeds, and rhizomes. And the Mediterranean diet seems to have a lot of naturally occurring antioxidants, found mostly in fruits and, uh, of course, it's in figs, which contain some of the highest polyphenol concentrations of any commonly available, available fruit. So, uh, in the world, different types of uh, assays are used to uh, elaborate the uh, antioxidant activity, but in my study, we use ABTS and DBBH. And uh, ABTS assay, uh, in which we use the Trolex as the water-soluble version of vitamin E, and we use as a standard to monitor ABTS and DBBH, in which uh, it's a radical skin-giving test and also simple and rapid method of assessing antioxidant activity by assessing the absorbance of the solution following the blend of antioxidant compositions with DPPH radicals. And uh, use then this technique, uh, which is named as high, highly uh, the HPLC, a high uh, liquid chromatography uh, technique, Fingerprint is a common uh, comprehensive method of uh, assessment to check the quality and reliability of the food and plant extract. So uh, HPLLC is a very reliable method to check the uh, quality and quantity of the plant extracts. Uh, and then uh, uh, I went for the RNA sequencing in which they use NGS technologies and which enable us to uh, perform high throughput sequencing technologies in model and non-model uh, plants as well. So uh, why I choose this? Because uh, little knowledge uh, is like proteomic and transcriptomic uh, knowledge is available at the, at the fig uh, fruit is concerned in their commercial ripe and tree ripe stages. 
So as I mentioned that uh, HPLC is a reliable method as uh, Turkey is the world largest producer of the fig and it's a vital uh, crop of Turkish diet. But the problem is this, that uh, despite the great diversity, local figs have uh, remained poorly uh, examined for their biological activities. So uh, that's why I use uh, to, uh, uh, I used to uh, filter this. And after that, uh, this is my specific uh, objective of my research. There are two main objectives used. First one, to investigate the mechanism of anthocyanin biosynthetic genes and their regulatory roles in fig uh, coloration. And second one is to facilitate the genetic improvement of high anthocyanin fruit fig cultivar. So based on my journal objectives and specific objectives, my first part was to, uh, was to, uh, was to characterize and determine the quality and quantitative composition of the difference in the bioactive content in the peels and pulp of eight distant Turkish commercial fig varieties. And uh, I selected those genotypes during their ripening stage using HPLC technique, high performance liquid chromatographic technique. So here is the literature uh, review. I can skip it uh, quickly because I am less of the time. So here are different scientists work on uh, these topics as well. So material and methods, it's most important part. Uh, as I mentioned that I took four VTs and four genotypes of figs of different color, which mainly starts from dark purple, greenish uh, varieties were there and yellowish. Varieties are there as a name and photographs indicates as well. Then uh, uh, how I collected this material, I collected this uh, it from from an ice box directly from the Chukro University Adana uh, field because uh, uh, later on I have to isolate the RNA as well, so might be there is a chance of the degradation as well. So that's why I put immediately into the ice box and then I uh, collected 15 to 12 healthy fruits per genotypes in three replicants. And soon after that, I transmit them into the laboratory to peel off uh, those fixed genotypes. And after that, I peel off those samples like uh, peels and uh, pulp were detached separately. And after that, I put it into minus 20 degrees centigrade. And now the samples are ready for HPLC. Uh, so the, the first step, as you can see in your diagrams, I collected the samples. And uh, in your right side, I detached all the peels from them. And now uh, here it's shown that it's uh, put it into the freezer dryer to remove the moist and to make the readings evenly. Uh, so that's why I make this. And after that, as you can see, I grinded the samples. Uh, yeah, you. And after that, uh, I, I weigh all the samples uh, to uh, to uh, prepare the solvent for this. And after that, uh, I put into the methyl uh, solvent uh, and uh, it's here you can see, and I put it uh, into the homogen homogenization uh, into the shaker and centrifuge. And after that, uh, I make the dilutions uh, and put it into the small falcon tubes and supertenant is transferred. And then uh, it's put it into the filter and into the vial bottle. Now the vial bottles are ready for HPLC uh, design. So after HPLC or second step, because I use HPLC MSMS for, for the extraction of phenolic compounds and for the sugars, I used only HPLC analysis. And after that, we performed uh, antioxidant DPPH and ABTS analysis. Uh, according to the protocols, here you, you can see we are preparing the dilutions. Uh, and in the uh, left of the screen, we are making ABTS antioxidant analysis and the pink color shows the DPPH antioxidant fig samples. And after that, uh, 
based on HPLC, uh, we gathered the information that which genotype or variety contain the high amount of anthocyanin and which contain the low amount of anthocyanin. We took those two varieties. And after that, with this uh, protocol, we isolate the RNA. So here are the laboratory techniques which we use in our lab. So to check their quality and quantity, uh, we put it into the nanodrop spectro uh, photometer. And uh, after that, uh, we, we checked into the agrose gel. 1.5% of the agrose gel was prepared. And then we uh, send samples for RNA sequencing at the Genox Genetic Diagnostic Center, Turkey, where the messenger RNA isolation were formed and cDNA copies were uh, formed and uh, preparation of cDNA libraries. Here you can see there are four uh, steps. The first one shows the RNA nanochip with injection and bioanalyzer and it's doing into the uh, 6000 sequencing platform. And after that, we went for the uh, filtration because we got the raw sequencing and after with there, we, uh, we filter uh, the sequences as well. And then we perform the bio informatic analysis by using different softwares. And uh, then we analyze the gene expression and we identify uh, those expression level with the use of this FPM formula. And uh, after that, we, uh, we created a gene ontology uh, analysis as well with also that contain biological uh, biological uh, sense, cellular component and molecular function inside that by the use of fiber. And after that, we, we, we did the kick uh, analysis and to validate our result, we performed quantitative real-time PCR analysis uh, in which we use four genes and one endogen control. Uh, and after that, we, we uh, used uh, to design primers. And after that, we validate our results of RNA sequencing. So if we use uh, four genes and one endogen control, you are the real their quantity are used here the CD libraries and also uh, this cyber cyber green method the reactions were used uh, to create QRT PCR reactions and statistical analysis were performed uh, also and test and GMP software were used Innova was used and uh, the last PCA analysis was also conducted so I will quickly jump into the results. Uh, because our first uh, part of our results deals with HPLC. So uh, we identify seven anthocyanin compounds and 24 non-colored phenolics were detected. So here you can see the chromatogram of uh, different uh, fig cultivars and genotypes. And here are the table and here you, you can see that uh, we identify uh, seven uh, anthocyanin colored compounds in peels and uh, 24 in colorless uh, uh, compounds. So apart from that, cyanodine uh, three rutinocytes were the main compound identified there. And the variety 011 and 58 contain, and it's a dark color variety, which contain the high amount of colored anthocyanin and the cerelope, which is the famous variety uh, cultivated in uh, Turkey, it's a green yellowish variety. So they depicted the less amount of uh, anthocyanin in a uh, whole of the varieties also. So uh, when we went for the pulps second, uh, the results were the same. The uh, um, anthocyanin compounds were mostly seen in uh, this variety, 0, 1, 1, and 58, and the least amount of anthocyanin were seen in uh, cerelo varieties and in the colorless chlorogenic acid were the most prominent one. So after the uh, uh, colored phenolic compounds, uh, we identify the sugars as well, sucrose, glucose, and fructose in our samples. So here you can see uh, in the peels and the pulps, uh, the content of uh, sugar in the peel, uh, we got the highest value uh, in terms of glucose, and then fructose, and then sucrose. And in the pulps, uh, we found fructose, then glucose, 
uh, and then uh, sucrose as well. And we see higher antioxidant activity in over a variety as 011N58 and the least amount was contributed in the serial lobe. Uh, then we uh, did uh, PCA analysis in order to in investigate the key uh, elements present between the colored anthocyanin and colorless phenolic compounds. So here you can see in your screen that uh, we performed uh, the principal component analysis uh, to validate our results. And it's uh, firstly it's into the peel and also in the pulp as well. So uh, from uh, that side, we, we got the result that uh, we've got a variety 011 and 58. It's a dark purple variety which contain high amount of anthocyanin. And on the other hand, serilope is the greenish yellow cultivar with the least amount of anthocyanin cultivar. So we selected uh, we selected this variety for the further RNA sequencing and for other purpose. So here you can see. Uh, we did the isolation, and uh, here you have variety and serotope as well. Uh, and after that, uh, we, we we got the values of number of sequence, which starts from 36 ethylenes. Uh, there, as you can see, uh, in 58 samples and in the serotope as well. And uh, here you can see the unique uh, reads and uh, duplicate reads both in the 58 uh, variety and the serial variety as well. And uh, here, uh, after that, we analyze the different expressed genes uh, in 58 and serial and total uh, the upregulation genes were 3,542 and the downregulation genes in both the genes were 3,100. And 64, and here you can see in the diagram that 100% uh, of uh, upregulation was seen into the serial variety, and 92% of the upregulation of the genes were found in 58 varieties, and also uh, downregulation were mostly seen in 58 variety, and uh, uh, after that the serial contributed uh, there. So here, uh, uh, after that, we performed the gene uh, ontology analysis in which the first part is the biological process in which these two uh, cellular response to chemical stimuli and response to oxygen containing compound were the dominant one there and uh, in the cellular component in Golgi apparatus and bounding membrane of organelles were the dominant uh, found and in the molecular function uh, the most uh, the most dominant was transfer activity transferring phosphorus containing groups and after that, we perform the keg analysis and in which we can find the biosynthesis of the secondary metabolites is the leading and the dominant one there with the fold enrichment value of uh, around about 1.8. And after that, uh, here I highlighted this green portion. This is the pathway of the biosynthesis of the secondary metabolites uh, pathway. And uh, after that, uh, uh, because we did that, and after that, to validate those results, we went for performing QRT PCR techniques. So after that, we uh, first we optimize the temperature of uh, those uh, genes and primers. And here are the uh, QRT machine in which we performed uh, over Q, uh, QRT PCR results and uh, to evaluate, uh, validate our results in which uh, we use CHS uh, child cone synthesis uh, uh, family and also CHS uh, family for, uh, for, for the profile of uh, genotype. And second one is uh, apart from CHS, CHI, uh, child cone isomerase, then PAL, uh, phenylalanine, ammonia lyase, and flavonoid 3 hydroxylase. Uh, we used these four anthocyanin linked genes to detect or value. So here you can see in your screen that a higher level of uh, CHS uh, genes were seen in the dark color variety 58 uh, as compared to the yellow colored uh, serilope and also the same results uh, CHI were shown the high amount of uh, expression of the genes in 58 variety as compared to 
Cerelo and in F3H, uh, again, uh, 58 variety uh, contained the high amount of expression as compared to Cerelo. And uh, with the PAL, the similar results, the most expression were seen in 58 as compared to Cerelo. And here are the diagrams in which you can see uh, the comparison of the four uh, genes in which the CHI uh, uh, is the most uh, dominant one there, expression in both the varieties. So uh, we can then for the conclusion, what we uh, take from that, that uh, and 0, 1, 1, and 58 displayed the highest total phenolic compounds and hence the higher antioxidant activity detected in both their peels and pulps uh, than the other Turkish experimental fig uh, cultivars and genotypes as Turkey is the most important country in terms of the production of figs. Uh, Sarelope and Bursasia are the most commonly grown varieties in the country. However, in our study, the Sarelope variety has the least phenolic content and antioxidant activity detected among all the experimented samples. Uh, additionally, the dark peels uh, contain the prominent level of phenolics, anti compounds, antioxidant compounds that compared to yellow peels, uh, like as I mentioned, Cerelope and Bursacea. Furthermore, uh, by utilizing RNA analysis, this study provides valuable insights for the breeding and production purposes, and QRT PCR analysis was conducted to evaluate the results of the expression of the genes, and QRT uh, PCR uh, confirmed the expression of four genes in 0, 1, 1, and 58 over serilobes. So what is my recommendation upon my study? Therefore, the based on the result, the selected genotype 0, 1, 1, and 58 may be considered for the future breeding material, and they are ready to use material and could also promote health, uh, human health, and they are rich in uh, natural antioxidants and phenolics. According to the finding of the current study, it is recommended to consume the whole fig uh, with their dark peels for the better results. So what is the future impact of my study? Moreover, significant differences in biochemical antioxidant potential across suggested that they have enriched phytochemical profile that demonstrated approach to converting fit genotypes into value-added food ingredients. The outcome of my study is not only a fruitful interest to asset to our understanding, constitution, and biological function of various fig peels and pulps, but also have the great impact on the nutrition and human health as well. So what we need to do more research is required to investigate the biological activities and further studies, including transcriptomics, to support their beneficial potential for the human diet. And uh, last but not least, I would like to thank my doctoral advisor, Dr. Gildi Zaka Kachar and uh, Maiko Supo Guardiani and uh, all the uh, partners of Prima and Fijian and especially the organizers of the workshop. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much also to you, Gastan, for your nice presentation. So we can move uh, to this, the next one from uh, Ol Fasadud the, the body. Okay. From National Bank of Genes in Tunisia. Good. So uh, the title of uh, the presentation is Conservation of Genetic Resources of the Fig Tree in Tunisia. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Yes. Uh, I'm uh, Olfa Sadud from National Gene Bank of uh, Tunisia. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. I will share my uh, screen uh, with you. So, um, sorry. Um, I would like to present the uh, conservation of the genetic resources of the fig tree in uh, Tunisia. So, first of all, I uh, think that it's worth to present Tunisia in the regional context, that is uh, a South Mediterranean country and uh, situated in the North uh, Africa. Sorry. So, uh, it is uh, facing uh, climate change, uh, many diseases, 
Uh, and uh, it's uh, important to, uh, to think uh, when we conserve genetic uh, resource about the economic uh, issues, uh, socio cultural, and the political issues. Okay. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, several institutions that are involved in this uh, uh, conservation of uh, plant genetic resource. So, uh, when uh, we are speaking about uh, genetic resource, okay. We uh, sorry, uh, sorry. yes. Oh, thank you. Um, you have to share your presentation because you, we can ah. see you, but uh, we cannot uh, see your presentation. I think that I shared, but uh, okay, it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, one, one second. Okay. You have to confirm you because it's, it's okay now. Not yet. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, perhaps okay. Okay. So put in uh, presentation mode, please. Your presentation. Full screen. Sì. Put your screen in present. Your presentation in full screen mode, please. Ah. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very. It's much. okay now. Can, okay. Can start. Okay. So, um, I say uh, that uh, when we speak about genetic resource, uh, we are uh, speaking about food and agriculture. So, the challenges are to, uh, to uh, ensure sustainability, to ensure access, and to ensure security. It's worth to say also that for fig trees, for example, or for olive, uh, that are species, uh, these species are part of our history of, uh, and our identity. So the cultivation is very old in Tunisia and, uh, as you say, uh, present in the history, in the mosaics, and uh, it's uh, worth to, uh, to know this, I think. So uh, also I would like to uh, present the situation for Tunisia at uh, the international uh, uh, level. So I, um, I, uh, I, I, uh, I think that it's worth to, to speak about uh, international mechanisms for conservation use and for access and benefit sharing agreements that Tunisia is, a, uh, is part of. So um, we can follow the international undertaking, the Convention of Biological Diversity in 1992. And uh, also Tunisia is, part, uh, is ad adopted in 2001, the International Treaty of FAO, that is speaking about uh, 64 uh, species. Uh, and uh, more recently, we are uh, we are we adopted the Nagoya Protocol that is speaking about access and the benefit sharing. I think all these instruments are important for uh, conservation of uh, genetic resource. So uh, we found uh, the National Gene Bank uh, of Tunisia, uh, in which I supervise uh, the group of uh, fruit trees, and in this group we can uh, find uh, the fig trees. Uh, the gene banks uh, have a mission uh, to uh, mainly to conserve the genetic resource and uh, it functions on uh, nine networks uh, for cereals, forage, fruit trees, legumes, medicinal plants, animals, microorganisms, forest plants, and medicinal plants. So uh, the research is simply for uh, conservation. So uh, we are interested uh, mainly on X2 as a gene bank X2 conservation. We did the prospection and the characterization, and we have uh, done some works for on-farm uh, genetic uh, conservation. So uh, we have uh, to answer uh, to some needs as a selection of uh, varieties, creating and uh, valorization of some uh, varieties also, uh, and uh, we are collaborating with other institutions for these uh, works. So, the agriculture, uh, genetic uh, research, sorry. <clears throat> the agriculture genetic uh, research in Tunisia, so it is uh, represented by a wide genetic diversity for several crops, and uh, it's considered uh, as a secondary center of diversification for many species, as olive and the fig. Uh, it's worth also to say that there is a, 
traditional knowledge linked to this uh, culture for fig, for example, for caprification, for the how to uh, to collect uh, the the fruits, etc. And uh, we have a, a diversification of agricultural systems uh, for small farmers. So, uh, as you see here, some agriculture system we can find intensive culture domestic uh, uh, agriculture or familiar uh, agriculture and we have also a specific agriculture system that is the oasis and uh, we found the three stages with palms fruit trees that can be fig or apricots or olive and we can found in uh, the last stage uh, mar uh, legumes or cereals or forage so uh, also I found that it's uh, interesting to found uh, to to speak uh, sorry about food Considering uh, farming, economic issues, social and environmental, important for uh, genetic research, this aspect, in order to valorize this, uh, this and uh, to, uh, to, do, to do a sustainable also for, uh, some, for a species, for example, and for special varieties. And I will show uh, a Big in uh, the last of my so uh, there is uh, several also contrasts for uh, the uh, genetic uh, research for figs uh, that is the uh, still not characterized I think that although there is many studies but there is uh, minor cultivars not yet uh, of the national uh, database that uh, uh, um, grouped all the found from several institutions researchers uh, all two collection uh, uh, are uh, suffering for example for uh, that need also better management i think uh, and you can see uh, diseases that are really threatening uh, fig germplasm, or especially in the north, we found some diseases, um, some plants uh, disappearing, causing by uh, disease. So the methodology of work is uh, to do prospect, uh, to characterize morphologically, morphologically, molecularly, biochemically, and to multiply the accessions uh, to conserve them, of course, uh, principally ex situ and uh, in some cases on farm with uh, the agriculture, the farmers, and uh, to distribute uh, some action for uh, the users. Uh, I show you here some photo about uh, the work for the inventory and survey with uh, our colleague researcher from other institutes. This is a uh, collect missions in the north of Tunisia uh, that is named El Alia. So as you see, it, it was uh, done in uh, July. Here I show you some varieties, some morphological characterization for Khedri, Sultani, Marsawi. And uh, for molecular characterization, we uh, usually use SSR and uh, sometimes FLP, RAPD, and uh, we use uh, for the, sequ uh, the sequencer to genotype. So um, recently in 2000, uh, 14, we use the rules of FAO for establishment of the feed gene banks. Uh, and we did all the studies and analyzes uh, so needed for the, this establishment. Now we have uh, the electricity, access for water, and the establishment, so the plants. And we have their uh, fig collection. Uh, now we begin with 15 local cultivars with three duplicate per cultivar and uh, with uh, uh, seven meter by seven meter for the separation of the plants. And uh, we are preparing uh, 27 for this year for plantation. So I will not present the species uh, because uh, the colleagues present this uh, very well. So it's very well distributed in the Mediterranean. Uh, maybe I will see, I will say that uh, we uh, have um, 34,000 uh, hectares cultivated with uh, 27,000 uh, ton of uh, production. 
So uh, for the state of art of FIG X2 collection, we, ha we have uh, uh, five X2 collection. And uh, we established in 2014, as I say, the fruit tree field gym bank. Uh, we have uh, did collaboration with uh, Isa Shatmarim and the uh, Center of Research of the Gesh for uh, supporting financially uh, the two collection. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there are still works to do for this uh, collection. Uh, as I told, I, I will present here a case study of valorization of fig of Jebba uh, that is uh, situated in the north of Tunisia. Uh, so the work began since many years in order to valorize these uh, varieties. Uh, you know, the better uh, use, uh, the better way to conserve the genetic resource is to use the, the genetic resource. So since uh, the, uh, the fig of Jebba uh, has the uh, AOC, we say, it's uh, appellation uh, d'origine contrôlée, uh, so uh, we see that uh, there is a really uh, sustainable uh, uh, development of this region. And uh, recently also, the gardening of Jibba are subscribed as immaterial patrimony. Uh, unique, uh, it is a unique agroforestry system uh, with uh, 660 meters of altitude. And uh, now fig of Jebba is very, very well uh, uh, known in Tunisia. And we have also uh, exportation of these products, uh, valorization. We have many also um, agro, uh, agro, um, agro products, uh, such jam, such juice, uh, so uh, from this, um, a fig variety and the region also we have developed an uh, agro ecotourism for the to see the plantation of pigs so there is a, a dynamic in this region uh, thanking to um, thanks to, to the fig plantation now we have another also fig uh, varieties in kisra region it's another Kis uh, region that is famous of pig and it's very specific that uh, is uh, uh, also, we are working on this uh, uh, region to do the label and to have also the, uh, the um, to subscribe as immaterial patrimony uh, also for this uh, uh, for this region. And uh, thank you uh, very much. Thank you for your nice presentation. So we can move for uh, the next speaker. Dr. Hoguzan Kaliskan from Mustafa Kamal University in Turkey. Yes, well, okay, thank you to be here. And um, the presentation is Caprifig, genetic resource in the Eastern Mediterranean region of Turkey. Thank you. Okay, so, I am wait for the, sh share the, my presentation. It is not active. Just a minute, please. Not yet. I am waiting. Share screen is not active. Okay, I am late. I'm sorry. Try again. Okay, gain. No? Why? Or also is preventing why? I don't know. Sorry. My browser is preventing to put preventing share screen. Why? Just an appeal. Just, okay. just. Okay. We can we can okay. see your presentation. We can. Thank you. Okay, we can. 
I can start, maybe. Yes, okay. You can start. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, first of all, I thanks to uh, Professor Aizin Küden from uh, Turkey uh, for the invi invitation uh, the workshop uh, and Professor Thomas Giordani accepted the invitation. And also I would like to congratulate the organizing team and Peak Jam partners for this beautiful workshop. Next. Okay, we know four groups of peaks are distributed based on cropping or pollination characteristics. First group is common figs. The figs require no pollination to produce a commercial crop as known persistent group. Second group is similar type. Uh, the trees require pollination to produce for main crops. That is Cadicus group. Next. Uh, another group is San Pedro type, and last group is Caprifix. Caprifix is very important for us uh, because the caprification is very important for the Cadicus groups, and also some uh, Caprifix uh, can be persistent uh, group, uh, is very uh, critical for the breeding study uh, for the edible pigs. Next. Please. Yes, the pollens of Crofici crops are transferred to edible fix by Blastovogafisenes, and this process is called caprification or pollination. Therefore, Crofici crops is very important for the fig cultivation. Next. Caprifix can be affected of some fruit characteristics in edible figs, such as fruit size, skin and flesh color, total solid the solids, harvesting period, phytochemical profiles, and some aroma compounds. Turkey is major fig producer and exporter in the world, and there are two main cultivars used for fig cultivation. We have to use it to caprification for the enough fruit set and yield in these cultivars. The majority of commercial fig cultivars in Turkey are Kadikus. Mediterranean region of Turkey meets 7% of fig production, but this region has rich fig genetic resources. Yes. Next one, please. Yes, figs are distributed in many regions of Turkey. We see fig fundings in Turkey, in uh, Anatolia, the, the map is showing for us, Anatolia is origin figs. The carbonized and dried fig fruits from the Neolithic period in Yunuktepe, Mersin, in the Eastern Mediterranean region of the Turkey, uh, very important for us, uh, the region is the very rich fig genetic research. Yes. Several early studies have reported the morphological diversity of edible fig genotypes and endorsed the use of rep reproducible morphological parameters to characterization of the genotypes. Unfortunately, to date, there has been a little research into the genetic resources available for caprifix gamplasm. Next. The objective of this study was to determine morphopomological pollinizer and genetic char characterization of some caprifix genotypes grown in the Eastern Mediterranean region of the Turkey. This region, Mersin, Adana, Osmania, Hatay, and Kahraman Marash province uh, are included. Next, please. Yes. The project was started in 2014. Total 90 caprific genotypes were selected, and six caprific cultivars were used to compare the genotypes. Next one.
our study, we investigate a total 45 characters. Next one. Yes, we, we use it uh, morphopomological characteristics and uh, polynesial uh, properties, uh, uh, descriptor were used to characterization. Next, please. Yes, we, we see polynesial parameters, number of male, flower, and colostobacter number, pollen viability, germination, pollen number, mammonia and mammacrons, and this situation. Next one. Uh, we see TTC test. Next one. And pollen germination was investigated. Next, please. And male and gall flowers were counted. Amount of pollen production was investigated by hemostrometer methods. Next one, please. Next one. SSO genotyping, microsatellite polymorphism were identified using 15 SSR trimers previously characterized in pig. Next one. Pollen morphology was observed in genetically distant individuals from each province depending on the SSR analysis. Next, please. Yes. Dry pollens were used for scanning electron microscopy studies. Pollens were covered with gold palladium particles. Our results showed that a lot of uh, a big variety for the morphopomological characterization. Tree shape, shoot length, uh, fruit weight, fruit neck length, osteol width, very important uh, variables for the morphopomological characterization in capific and plasma. Next one. Uh, we see variation in the fruit weight. Some capific genotypes uh, have the at the above uh, 50 grams. Next, please. Yes, Hatay 2 had the highest fruit weight and fruit width. Next. Yes, fruit skin color A and who value are also important characters for the characterization of the coffee pick and plasma. Next one. Yes, we see variation in fruit skin color A value, positive value showed that the red colors. Next one. Yes, we determine, <coughs> determine uh, Hatai uh, uh, 3 genotype had the black skin color and Hatai 6 had the green uh, skin color. Next one. Yes, we determined that difference in fruit skin and flesh colors for coprifix. The main skin color is coprifix was green and yellow green. However, different skin colors groups were detected. In addition, the flesh color of the genotypes was mostly white, but some genotype had different intensities of purple color in the fruit flesh. It's very diversity for the coprifix uh, characterization. Also, Blastovaga number per fruit and amount of male flowers per fruit, very important uh, properties. Next one. Yes, we, we see variation in Blastovaga number per fruit, very high uh, levels. In some genotypes uh, was the uh, above 1,000 Blastovaca number per fruit. Next one. The results of principal component analysis indicated that the number of gall flowers per fruit, date of emergence of Blastovaca was from fruit, duration of Blastovaca emergence, percentage of pollen viability and germination, and pollen number per anther, per flower, and per fruit, 
could be useful parameters for assessing whether coprific genotypes would be useful polymerizer. Yes. In addition, in our study, two genotypes were evaluated to be persisting. As known, Partona Karpik uh, coprifix, Osmania 2, and Mersin 6. Next one. And our SSR genotype, uh, genotyping results, factorial correspondent analysis separated the coprifix groups, suggesting that coprifix population from Turkey were unmixed, probably because of low gen flow, luckily because gen plasm has not been moved among geographical area, and because many coprific populations grown from propagated by seed. Our molecular data relieved that great genetic diversity within this coprific gen plasm. Next one. Also, pollen morphology, uh, we investigate in this study, a single porata was detected for the first time in seven coprifix. Double porata was dominant in all coprifix columns, and the number of triable porates varied from 8% to 54%. Porata number is very important for the uh, pollen germination on the stigma. Next one, please. Yes. According to the PCA results, pol uh, polar length, equatorial diameter, pollen shed, number of porates, porata width, exit thickness, and abnormal pollen ratio were the most important properties in distinguishing coprifix from each other. Next one. In this project, two coprifix genotypes was determined as a persistent or partonocarpic coprifix. In our result, in addition, different coprifix genotypes in terms of color, size, and ripening times were added to coprifix genetic resources in Aydın, Turkey. Next one. Currently, we have some new steps for the uh, new projects. Step one, development of partonocarpic pea culture by crossbreeding. Bursa Sia and Osmania two combination were, was used the uh, project. Um, now, five, five, 500, 561 hybrid individuals are under observation. Next one. Next one, please. Yes. 2021 season, we, uh, we, we uh, obtained hybrid fruits and then uh, seeds germination and next hybrid plants were planted in pots. And then, next one. Next one, please. Some hybrids were budded on the seven years old Bursa Sia with the cordon pruning system applied. The system provides advantage in land use and labor since there are 10 or 30 hybrids on one plant. We see a new hybrids. Next one. Yes. Two groups we uh, make, and uh, one group hybrids uh, were booted on the Bursa CR plants. Fruits were formed in 30 percentage of hybrid uh, in 2023 season. In other group hybrids, they directly planted in the research area, and this year, fruits were formed in 3% of hybrids. Therefore, uh, budding is very important for the breeding study for the early fruiting. Next one. Step two, next year will be started, I hope, in 2024, fluidity breeding in persistent coprifix. 
uh, aims they were open to large pool to persistent coprotic genotypes and using them on a in a breeding program for the development of parthenocarpic edible pig. Therefore, we used the Osmania 2 and Mersin 6 coprotic genotypes. Next one, please. Okay, we would like thanks to Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey for uh, its financial support. Also, we grateful to the Peak Research Institute for supplying standard coprotic cultures. Next one, please. Yes, some weeps of the project trips, our project teams. Thanks a lot for the uh, great studies on the uh, area, research area. Next one. Some copy fix plants we see and uh, some of uh, cutting the uh, genetic uh, resources can be decreasing. Next one. Yeah. In her time, Harbia water falls and copper figs. Uh, next one. A lot of copper figs in there in uh, aqua culture in the natural. Uh, everywhere, a lot of uh, copper figs uh, are included. Very interesting for us. Next one. Yes, isolation applicated with tool for the uh, persistent of Cadiz Cruz uh, investigations from the Mersin province. Next, please. Okay, thank you for the attention. Finally, uh, coprific numbers are decreasing every year because of urbanization good constitution in the rural area and grafting for edible figs. Therefore, we have to protect these plants for the genetic resources. Thank you again. Thank you. So uh, the next speaker is, uh, should be uh, Arzu Ayar, is it correct? From uh, the Fig Research Institute from Turkey. Yes, I am here, Tomaso. Yes, we can. Uh, we can hear you. Welcome <clears throat> to everyone. Okay. Yes. Yes. Of, uh, or, uh, or the presentation is studies in the, the genetic diversity of female pigs <laughs> in the pig gene bank of Turkey. Thank you. Okay. Now you see? Just a, just a second. Can you see my presentation? Yes, please um, um, move your presentation to, to a full screen mode, please. Full screen. Full screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Welcome to everyone. It's nice to see you all here. Uh, I am Dr. Arzoyar from Peak Research Institute in Aydın in Turkey. Uh, I am working on uh, breeding and studying uh, genetic uh, in here. Today I will talk about uh, female pigs uh, in Turkey, pig pipe gene bank studies and genetic diversity. Uh, this presentation is part of the PIC Genetic Resources Conservation and Characterization Project supported by the General Directorate of Agricultural Policy. Uh, this is project information, project full name, uh, project number, project leader, and project team is uh, Yusin. Uh, 
Uh, I have divided my presentation into three parts. Uh, one, uh, first, uh, the pig variety in Turkey, the establishment of pig pile gene bank, the number of genotype and collecting areas, uh, and then I will move on to method part, the criteria uh, of pig variety, the scriptures, tree, breed, and leaf growth. Uh, and finally, I will explain other application in pig pipe gene bank st uh, selection studies and publication activities. Pig production is carried out in an uh, area of uh, 282,000. Uh, um, 19% of the world's pig production areas belong to Turkey. Uh, world pig production is uh, 1,265,000. Turkey runs this uh, first uh, with uh, 300. 20,000. Uh, Turkey ranks first in dried pig exports with 69%. Uh, export income uh, export in, income $293. Female Pick, uh, the female pig pipe gene bank in Turkey began to establish in the uh, 1970s. The number of varieties in types is 292. Uh, female genotype information in pig pipe gene bank is given table one. Uh, this 98% uh, uh, of female pigs originate from Turkey. 11% of this registered variety. <clears throat> In table uh, two, uh, female pig collection regions and the number of collections are given in Turkey. Uh, female pig trees collected region in Turkey, collected areas. Uh, the most collecting uh, region is the Asian region with uh, 36%. On the other hand, Marmara and Mediterranean regions are in the second place, 22%, with 22%. Uh, now, uh, move on to method part. Uh, female genotypes have been evaluated according to about uh, 112 uh, criteria. These are three growth, leaf growth, root growth criteria, and the phenological observations. Three growth. Three growth habit was evaluated in five groups. These are uh, erect, semi erect, open, spreading, and weeping. Three growth habit conditions of some peak genotypes are given in the image. Uh, Bardakçı, idle injury, more is erect. Sarı dizli, kara yaprak, sakız is semi erect. Beyaz orak, alaca, lob is open. Kuşadası bardakçı, siyah orak, langal is spreading. I would like to some uh, studies. Uh, I would like to share some of the studies on female pig root descriptions. Uh, First, uh, inner color. Uh, inner color uh, of the pigs in the collection varies from uh, white to purple, white and purple, white to purple. Uh, genotypes in the pig pipe uh, gene uh, gene bank uh, is the first, sorry. Mm. Excuse me, we cannot hear you, I'm sorry. The audio is not happy, I don't know. 
We can see the presentation, but uh, we cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? No. I, uh, can you hear me? Yes, now it's, it's okay. Oh. We can continue. Okay. Uh, genotypes in pig file gene bank differ in fruit shape and symmetry, flesh thickness, and uh, color of liquid through around the ostrel opening. Uh, for example, color of liquid through around the ostrel opening was determined as pinkish, transparent, and honey colored. Um, ostrel opening was determined uh, at different widths in genotypes. Uh, amount and size of fruitlets and uh, color and addition of scales around the ostrel opening. Different is genotypes. Um, then the cells, quantity and shape, uh, pulp cavity and the neck gland are some other identification criteria. These are uh, descriptors uh, of IPGRI. Uh, if criteria um, descriptors for pig, ipcri, and team uh, modified with picture according to characteristics of genotypes in Turkey. Uh, these are uh, our images uh, in uh, pig by gin bank. Ostoil opening uh, varied in range of 2 to 45 percent in genotypes. Uh, white ostoil opening was detected in most of the genotypes. Uh, the color uh, of the full skin was black in 30 percent of the genotypes, purple in uh, 40, uh, sorry, 21 percent, green, green in uh, thirty-two percent and yellow in thirty-four uh, percent. Uh, fruit width was determined uh, generally in the middle group. Uh, fruit lengths of the genotypes were found to be short in most of the collection, with seventy-five uh, percent. Fruit ripes uh, was examined in three groups as prominent, medium, and none. Medium uh, fruit ripes was found in half. Uh, of the genotypes with 52 percent. Color formation uh, in the flesh uh, was examined uh, three groups as intense, light, and non. No coloration was detected in the general. Uh, genotypes were generally found to be resistant in terms uh, of cracking from the osteol part. Shape of the fruit stalk was found to be short uh, and thick uh, in the more than half on the collection with uh, 53%. Addition of the stalk uh, from the thick was determined in, as easy in genotypes uh, with so, uh, uh, 58%. 58%. Uh, skin cracks uh, on the fruit are generally in the form uh, of minor cracks. Uh, I would like to share some leaf characteristics. The shape on the middle lobe in the leaf was evaluated on under four groups. groups. Uh, most of the genotypes uh, uh, were in group one, the other is group two. Shape of leaf base, uh, the shape of leaf base petal sinus uh, is generally determined to be calculate and truncate, truncate, sorry. Uh, genotypes were evaluated in terms of eight different leaf shapes, base coordinate, five lobes, uh, lobe spatulate, uh, leaf shape is dominant, uh, is most of the genotypes. Uh, about 53% uh, of the genotypes were located in the leaf area, reached in the medium group. Genotypes of pigs generally have uh, 
five blocks. Uh, these are leaf characteristic. Some of some leaf characteristics. Uh, uh, photographic studies of female thick genotypes, uh, fruit uh, cross section, uh, condition of the fruit of the branch, tree growth characteristics were photographed for each genotype. For example, uh, from uh, photographic studies of female thick genotypes, uh, kabak injury, beyaz bakale, uh, beyaz injir, kare injir, leucin. All identification data uh, of genotypes are recorded. A digital archive, uh, archive uh, has been created. Uh, we can also uh, work uh, brave operate uh, in the um, thick pipe chin bank. Uh, this brave operate uh, brave operates, uh, different brave operates uh, of genotypes. The genotypes remaining brave operate were determined uh, in this fruit definitions were made. Uh, Brave fruits of Karabakunya, Yediveren, Hetiye PRT have uh, come forward in terms of some fruit criteria. Uh, Brave fruit uh, character, uh, characters of genotypes were record, uh, recorded. Uh, the main products uh, in Turkey, uh, the main products of genotypes need capification. Uh, Brave operate doesn't need capification generally. The collection is uh, enriched with new genotypes. Uh, these are collection activities, selection studies, breeding studies, etc. Uh, you see, we make publication that introduce our country uh, and our activities. Uh, these are our uh, publication uh, about peak by gene bank and studies, peak genetic uh, resources conservation and the characterization. Maintenance work for the female peak land gene bank is conducted on a regular basis each year. Uh, I uh, now I will uh, mention it my uh, institute. Peak Research Institute. Uh, uh, Peak Research Institute was founded in 1938, uh, entitled Air Bailey Peak Breeding Station. Uh, and in the following years, different names was again. Uh, it consists of five main departments, growing techniques, uh, plant breeding, plant health, uh, agricultural economics, and food technology. These, these are old uh, images, uh, my institute. Uh, uh, Fick Research Institute. And again, uh, Fick Research Institute, we, uh, we studied in uh, 300, uh, uh, 325 hectare area and uh, two greenhouses. Uh, the department of institute, uh, five departments, block A, block B, a service building, cafeteria and the conference hall. Uh, it has uh, four laboratory. Plant, uh, plant physiology, uh, plant health laboratory, food uh, laboratory, tissue, uh, tissue culture laboratory. These are contact uh, information. Some of it is uh, my institute uh, collect and uh, we work uh, co 
colleague and evaluate data about the fresh and dried pig and the country by site. Uh, carry out basic and strategic research. Uh, collect genetic resources of uh, pig culture uh, and to evaluate uh, them as germplasm. germplasm. Uh, some of studies are uh, developing uh, culture increase of breed yield and quality, processing techniques and microtoxins, plant uh, production activities and economic activities. Some of objectives and the new studies uh, evaluate uh, new varieties for fresh and red pig conceptions, studies for correct estimation and yield on, on red deer. Uh, this is end of my presentation. Thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, this is my uh, email address. Uh, if you send your questions by email, I will try to answer them. Uh, this is our uh, some different female pig breed varieties in uh, pig by gene bank. Uh, this is me under pig tree. Uh, you know, uh, again, this is me. This is me. Uh, and uh, poster. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you again. So uh, we can move for. In the for the last uh, for, for the for the next uh, speakers, I suppose. Uh, He's Francisco Balas Torres, is it correct? Francisco, can you hear me? Ah, oh, sorry. I'm tired. I'm sorry, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Sí, puede comenzar. So, good morning, everybody. No, so thank you very much for allowing me to be part of this uh, workshop today that is uh, going to be the golden end to this wonderful experience of a vegan project. And so just uh, in order to give another point of view, different from statistics and um, uh, scientific point of view, I'm going to talk about uh, the activity that we carry out as, as a company. My name is Francisco Balas, as uh, you already know. And how can I move from my, my presentation? Thank you. And so let me start. Is it this way or the other? All right, so my present, in my presentation, I will just do a small introduction about our company and what we do, and then I will speak about the three main areas of influence that, from my point of view, I consider that to be generated some challenges that we need to fulfill, so to be more efficient, and uh, so to address uh, these uh, macro scenarios that we're having around us. And once we define all these challenges, we can speak about uh, how it would be the ideal figure that will help us to solve these problems, and also to speak about uh, the breeding improvement and the things that I will comment about in the presentation, and finally some conclusions. As I said, my company is a FIKI Europa SL limited company. The company was founded in 2016. We are just focused on the fig. Here you can see our crops that are in Guareña area. So we've got a surface of 30 hectares. I think tomorrow we're going to go there. And so you'll have the possibility to visit it. Last year, we marketed some 435 tons of figs in the three main segments where we work, dry, fresh fig, dry fig, and industrial fig. And we are quite comfortable, let's say, in public-private initiatives. We work with the city council of 
Guarena and to be, be like having a positive impact within the community. We consider it as part of our activity. We've got uh, a commitment to, to research and development. We have uh, some uh, research lines, and among them, the development of value-added product and innovative uh, productive systems, agronomic management essays, mainly due to irrigation. And so we, we have some couple of uh, added value lines from a fresh fix a waste and mainly to uh, to control all the chain. And also we're now working on developing some costs, some uh, value added cosmetics from uh, fig trees leaves and also we are developing the industrial cutting machinery for dried figs and uh, what they like the most the fig breeding program we work with some scientific uh, organizations we work uh, with uh, private and public research uh, organizations and uh, now we'll comment about these three areas the first one will be about the production and agri-food chain. That is, as you know, it's not easy to move figs from uh, the tree to the consumer. So what we call this is uh, from farm to fork. So the fix needs to pass several steps. Uh, the first one is uh, cold, and that is the most important one, then transportation. Uh, retailers uh, and so on, and the wholesale. It is quite large, but each and every step uh, we have some losses, and it is a threat. What are the main challenges that we have in this area? So first, first of all, the short life of the fig, much waste. And there's a lack of optimization of the resources. And also, the ripening date, which we defy the prices. So we need to be careful to the selling windows, since when some production areas are not having production at this moment, that is going to define the price. And so we need to, to, to have some peaks when in other regions and in the the rest of the Mediterranean basin, they are not having production, we should have production. And also the acceptation by the customer to have a good color, some of them purple, other cream, to have a sweet, a good flavor, and also all the nutritional value, because the fig needs to add some, some nutrients to the consumer. That would be the first area. The second one would be the environmental area and the climate change scenario. As you know, here in Badajoz, we've got um, a continental Mediterranean climate with some Atlantic influence. But let's say it is a very hot summer and dry summer. And so when spring is also dry or autumn is also dry, we have problems. And also, we are moving in a context, within a context of climate change, uh, the international uh, um, warm is, is, uh, is rising. And if you see the second graphic, graphic there, you can see the average uh, in, um, temperatures in Badajoz. And we've got an increase in the temperature and a decrease in the waterfalls. So what are the main challenges that we need to face in this area regarding climate change and environment and environmental problems? So we are facing a lot of anomalies within the vegetative cycles. We have uh, to high evapotranspiration evap rate. It is something that normally happens at uh, the first campaign, but now we are watching that in the rest of the campaigns, and also the trough to due to the lack of waterfalls. And as we are now in an irrigation area, we have in a shortage of water for irrigation. And also it produces the soil degradation so all these are abiotic things, but we are also facing biotic problems like the appearance of new pests and new diseases. And so we need to be ready. 
And as a definition, we need to we have this philosophy that every drop counts. So we need to be able to face all these problems that are just a few of them of, of all we are going to have to face in the next decades. The last uh, influence area would be not as a regulation as itself, but as socioeconomical institutional regulation. But just to sum up, that is going to be the European Green Deal, that is the big framework. And so from there, we're going to be having some European national regional policies that will affect us a lot. I'm not saying it's mad. I'm just saying that it is, and we have to be ready for that because uh, it is going to affect all of us in, in many working areas. And so we need to, maybe we can sum it up and say that we need to look for sustainability, not just the clients, customers, and so forth, but we need to be um, affordable. And uh, legislation is going to force us for that. So if we now start moving and adapting, that will be good for us. Some other related issues we can speak about the safety of food and also traceability and certification. And something quite problematic we have now is the lack of manpower, which, which has a, an impact in rural areas. And now we are having these problems in Spain. We have also a lack of uh, tools that we can use because there are some products that we know that are good for fig trees but are not registered. And so we lose tools so to fight against plagues and pests. We need to look for energy efficiency. We need to try not to generate waste. So the motto can be we would do more with less. That is the context where we are now, not just we, but the rest of the European countries. And now that uh, we have seen the challenges uh, of, uh, of in this area, sometimes I just decided to do my letter to Santa Claus about the perfect fig. And some of the characteristics I will ask Santa will be to have uh, extended shelf life, because this way we can save money, with a good um, um, harvesting, good uh, color, nice color, high yield with a very close ostiole, and so the fig is not exposed to insect and, uh, and uh, fungi and other things. With this uh, drying ability to be sweet, aromatic, and juicy. That should be the characteristics that are important for the market. There are many others, but those are the most important. In relation with the environmental framework, we find all the characteristics. We would like the fig tree to be disease resistant, pest resistance, and things about uh, this project, Figen. We would like. I would like uh, to have a um, salinity tolerant uh, or uh, fig trees that are uh, they can tolerate salinity and uh, drought, and about. Uh, all the regulations, I would like to have a new cultivars that uh, were on low input requirements adapted to new collection methods and suited for new culture methods. So I would like my fixtures to be adapted to all these. And so I, I think that we need to find new collection methodology, maybe not robotics, but we need uh, technology because uh, you think it is the area where the companies are less efficient. And once we have done this uh, letter to Santa Claus and we have this perfect fig, we need to find out how to reach it because we don't find that in the nature. So we need to work on breeding. We need to improve uh, the breeding. I consider that uh, genetic improvement would be the engine, the motivation. So all the added value that we can add to a new cultivar will be, we have a positive impact in the whole chain. If we develop 
a cultivar that is water resistant, we will have a saving. We will have less uh, costs. And so, and so the customer will pay less, and it will be also positive for the environment, for the community. And uh, water is uh, just one example. But uh, everything which we can modify in the, in the plants would be something good in long term. So we need uh, new, so we need new, more suitable cultivars. We have a germoplasma, we have institutions, we have researchers, we have technicians, we have know-how, we have a possibility to genotyping and phenotyping. We don't have a genetic engine and phenotyping tools that we have in other, in other crops. What we have is sooner than later. We need uh, funds uh, from the public uh, or private uh, environment, but we have uh, many ingredients. So to put a fig tree at the same level of other fruit uh, crops. And uh, uh, as conclusions, we, we are threatened in three main areas, production and agri-food chain, environmental and climate change and uh, everything regarding regulation and institutions. To face these uh, challenges, we need new approaches, especially when talking about breeding new cultivars. And so, in new initiatives like a fig hen, it is a project that showed the, that could provide with tools that producers and breeders can use to face these challenges. And there is still a lot of work to be done. But the identification of interesting genotypes and their application on breeding will be crucial for the achievement of these objectives. So I just want to say congratulations to all of you who participated in this Finham project. And as a beneficiary and a stakeholder of what you have done, thank you very much. That is my slice slide that, as we mentioned in our working lines, the administration wants us to show their support and what they consider is fair. So once again, thank you very much, and I hope you can continue working even in much more than soft and salinity. Thank you very much. So, next speaker, I suppose the last speaker, is Fateh Ailan from the Institute of Arid Region of Medenin in Tunisia. Okay? So, the presentation is Genetic Resources of the Fig Tree in Arid Zone in Tunisia, Considerable Potential, Diversity and Impact of Climate Change. Thank you. Please. Uh, um, Move your presentation to uh, okay to full screen. Okay, thank you. Hello. Do you help me? Yes. Yes. Try, please. Good. Good, good afternoon, everybody. So I am I am going to present my. Uh, Conference entitled Fig Genetic Resource in Tunisian Arid Region a Considerable Potential Diversity at the Back of uh, Climate Change. So, to begin with the situation of uh, fig genetic resource, so in Tunisia, the fig is characterized by a large adaptive potentiality to different climate conditions. So, fig is dis distinguished by a high number of local cultivars. And in, in, uh, in each region, in Tunisia is characterized by one, two, three principal cultivar, cultivars, which are very cultivated. 
concerning the local cultivars, we have a large center of synonymy and homonymy in uh, different uh, agro-system in Tunisia because fig is uh, characterized by a frequent exchange of cultivars or among the different regions uh, uh, in Tunisia. Furthermore, the effort has been made for the propagation and conservation of mal cultivars in Tunisia. My second point is the link for the importance of the potentiality of uh, fig cultivars or, uh, or, uh, and fig genetic resources in semi-arid and semi-arid agro-system. So in Tunisia, fig grow in uh, a large number of agro-systems, such as the agro-system of uh, mountains in the southeast of Tunisia, this region is characterized by uh, uh, cultivated uh, fig under rain condition. In general, fig trees are cultivated with other fruit species such as olive, almond, etc. Many varieties are uh, cultivated in this uh, region. The famous uh, ones were the, culti the cultivar Zidi and the cultivar Bayoudi. The second agro system, system is the oasis. So, Tunisian oasis constitutes an important reserve of fig genetic resources and many other species, such as date pan, fruit trees, and vegetables flowers. The next agro system concerns the uh, island agro system. So, in general, in this uh, agro system, uh, cultivars are uh, threatened by the extension of money and the local varieties uh, were distinct, such as the island uh, of Jirba and the Kirkna Islands. Uh, situated in the coast of, of Tunisia near the sea, fig is, is cultivated in plain and in garden near the house, generally, in general, with other fruit species such as olive, table, table vine, apricot, milberry, etc. In this region is known by the important fig production, especially zebra crop uh, cultivars. Now I come to the principal uh, selection criteria, criteria uh, for selection uh, fig. For the female fig, the main selection criteria are the production of the crop, production of the main crop, especially for drying or uh, for produce dried figs, uh, fruit appreciation, fig quality of fresh figs, and the, the size, uh, size shape of fruit, uh, of fresh fruit. The external, the external fresh and dried fruit color were uh, the were an important uh, criteria or an important parameter for selection fig. Concerning the capri fig, or the mal figs, the, the main selection criteria are the abundance production of uh, capri fig, the maturity date. It is a uh, it, it's a character. Uh, very interesting and abundance of pastophase of finance and pollen viability. Concerning, concerning the, the morphological or, or the characterization of these cultivars or, or these local cultivars based uh, mainly on morphological and pomological traits for fresh, uh, fresh uh, fruit, for dried fruit, uh, biochemical composition, sugar, polyphenol, uh, some agronomic characters uh, such as resistance to abiotic and biotic factor, and um, some molecular markers, markers like uh, such RPD is a set. The one of the important point uh, for the salad and con continents uh, uh, for uh, fig genetic resource, we have six uh, challenges. So the selection of the performant cultivars, conservation, XUT, NCT, uh, uh, the propagation of the plant material, 
cultures, cultures uh, practice in the pilot and the uh, phytochemical protection and the exchange of material with the region will, or with the agro-system in Tunisia. The second important is the challenge of the conservation of XT or our XT conservation of this resource genetic. So uh, the first point is management of the XT collection, propagation, protection, pilot management, uh, irrigation, fertilization, pollination, harvest management, and uh, funds are allocated, allocated for XT collection, gem bank for uh, management uh, uh, this uh, collection. The second point is the exploitation of the genetic resource. A lack post conservation strategy raises a problem in, the, in this collection. Regarding the genetic resource uh, management uh, operator, operators, so we, we have the research institute and uh, Essential among the, the farmers and non, non government organization uh, have an important role essential in the conservation of the local uh, cultivars or in the conservation uh, in city of the, the local cultivars in the, uh, in the fields, in the garden and collection uh, and some collection. Concerning the problem, problem phytosanitary, the risk of transfer of disease and pest, perhaps the major challenge of the exchange of plant materia from the different uh, re region in Tunisia, uh, such as fig mosaic disease and uh, emergence of some pests uh, were detected recently in some region in Tunisia, uh, which are uh, uh, causes a, a, pro, a problem. The orientation where the, orientation where the to the monocultured crops, it is facilitates the pilot practice and the harvest and causes some uh, the possibility of the invasion of a desired or pest specific to uh, any, uh, to some variety. As regards to the change in the type of production, so it appears that the traditional agro-system maintained the fruit uh, trees biodiversity and the change in the mode of uh, production from traditional to modern has uh, affected uh, affect the quality of the fig fruit produced in these uh, modern uh, pilots. Now I come in to the vulnerability of this uh, arid and oasis uh, agro-system to, to biotic and abiotic change. So arid and oasis agro-system are sensitive to change in phylids, uh, introduce of uh, now an adaptive species and varieties such as pitch uh, stress, increasing drought and soil salinization in uh, uh, especially in the oasis, and water resources are very limited and increasingly uh, recent. So I will finish my conference with the effect of climate change on the fig genetic resources. So uh, uh, on the one hand, a very difficult, the, the very difficult climate condition uh, rained in, uh, the, in the arid uh, uh, area. Impact of drought on fig plant trees, uh, trees uh, where uh, are dried out and the highly endangered fig genetic resource uh, threatened uh, this genetic resource. The degradation of the second, second floor, floor in the oasis, especially the fig trees has a, a effect on the, the system and cause the natives in this area. Climate change, diversity, and, and the risk 
causing irreparable damages for all the three flowers in this oasis, date palm, fruit trees, and uh, vegetables uh, plants. On the other hand, the effect of the climate change on the production of the quality uh, of uh, the fig produced in this uh, region, so uh, have effect on the fig production, fruit maturity, fresh and dried fig quality, the advantage of the Capri fig harvest season, which uh, is uh, very important for pollination uh, female fig, perturbation of the insect cycle of Blastopagapsinus, especially in the Saharan uh, region, change in the biochemical composition of fig fruit and uh, 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 summer and autumn rains affect the quality of fresh and dried figs uh, in general. Furthermore, the appearance of uh, new disease and pests uh, caused by the, this uh, climate change in the arid region. I, I finished uh, my conference to, uh, with the adaptation of arid and oasis agro-system to the effect of climate change. So we must respect agro-system in terms of plant and animal biodiversity, resistance species, uh, diversification of uh, income uh, of uh, the farmers, uh, the socket point monitoring of the species and varieties introduced in this oasis or in this uh, 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 pilot in, in arid region, restoration of the vegetative, vegetative cover and uh, restoration of the biodiversity in general, in general, and supervision of economic, economic and social activity for respect, for respect of the agro-system in arid region. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you to you. So, we have finished the, the presentation. Can you confirm? Okay. Thank you. So, are there any questions? We have time, uh, no, no, not so much time, <laughs> because it's uh, lunch time. But anyway, are there any questions for the speakers uh, from the audience? If there are any, there aren't any questions, I would like to to conclude the, the, this uh, very nice uh, workshop. As you know, in the Mediterranean uh, area, mo most of the fig cultivation is carried out by small farmers and is based on local cultivars, which are the results of empirical selection made by farmers in different environmental conditions. So, from a genetic point of view, the current fig cultivar have undergone a low level of genetic improvement. So, as said Francisco before, breeding is the answer. Um, today, the oral presentation and also um, the concept uh, uh, described in the poster highlighted uh, the importance of research for the characterization of the fig tree, genetic resources, including the capri figs. Uh, and, and only with, with this uh, characterization, uh, this characterization can help us to select or to create new varieties uh, of the fig that can uh, help the sustainable production of the fig in the future. So in this sense, uh, genetic resources, uh, and, but also uh, genetic efforts, uh, including uh, uh, research uh, at different level, genomic level, uh, biochemical level, transcriptomic level, metabolic level, and so on, are, are crucial, I, I mean. But is it very important also their works, 
uh, uh, that ca curators of, of uh, German plus banks uh, do every day. So we hope that the contribute of research stakeholders, including plant growers, German plant banks, policymakers, government, but also uh, private companies can give uh, a significant stimulus for the expansion, the expansion of, of this species in the, of this species, uh, in the future. Do you agree? <laughs> I hope so. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming. I, I, will, uh, I want to thank uh, all the organizers for the great, all, also the technicals, uh, for the great uh, effort uh, um, in the organization of this workshop. So thank you again for, your, for coming, okay? Thank you. <laughs>